Welcome. Test, test. Test, test. Last episode of 2021. Welcome. Episode 216 of Dunn and Drew. We're in that weird week between Christmas and New Year's. Why is it weird? Because it feels like it doesn't exist. It's like we're just floating in limbo. Mm. It's what is it? Well, for people that actually, you know, that go to work, um, it's a weird week. It's like, how much effort do I put in? Because y'all be off all week, right? It's like a long break before go back to work in the new year. Not everyone's off a week. Well, a lot of people are, though. But I would be surprised if a lot of people are off this week. But what I'm saying is school and then the some, probably very few that are off all week. Um, if it's a weird week, it's like how much, how much effort it's a bunch of Fridays pretty much. It's like, how much effort am I putting in? Not a lot. Sounds like a great week for me. Yep. It has been a great week so far. Um, hope your Christmas was great. You Thank- feeling, you feeling any COVID in the no. year? No, we good. We good in this house. Yeah, we're good in this house. It's good. My immune system ever since we uh, moved and ever since I got COVID in August, we've been smooth sailing. Like, I'm ready to fight any war. <laughs> Maybe not the flu. I haven't got the flu vax. Um, so, the flu might be one that, that hits me. But so far, so good. Yeah, same. But not same in the fact that I've been good. You know, I'm always, you know, sniffing and sneezing. doesn't matter what day or season we're in. But haven't caught that on me. And I'm hoping I don't because we are seeing some surges around the country right now. So, I'm just... Checking on you, making sure we good, because we've been at some events. We got some more events to go to. So how was your Chris? Thank you for the Golden Retriever calendar. You're welcome. You know me so well. I saw I was like, oh, this shit cute. And Andy need to write shit down. So he was using it today. <sighs> Thank God he wrote something down for once. I'm so I forgets just, it. <laughs> I'm just so I prefer just keep it in my head. It's not in the well, head. Though, like worry about it. it. Worry about it when the time comes. Yes, and that's that, unfortunately that's my habit when it comes to calendars. I just put it in my head and hey, forget it. Come come time for it to happen, I'm either going to remember it or I'm going to get a reminder somehow or I'm going to be late to it or miss it entirely. Uh, but usually in terms of like doctor's appointments, they'll send you out a reminder. Um, it's just sometimes you plan something if you forget about it and have to cancel what you planned. It's mostly our shit that you forget. You'll be like, oh shit, I forgot about that. But your no, shit, not our ours. Shit. Our shit. Oh, jeez. Can Our you turn shit. that fan toward me? Oh, yeah. Oh, Thank man. You. you might need this closer to you because this fan is going to make me sneeze. Oh, boy. When that wind hit me, boys. <laughs> <laughs> no, it just if it's an issue, just leave it there then. No, nah, chill. Why is that? Why are you putting it there? I can, can you point it down? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to fix it. Just fix okay. my mic real quick. Uh, we have a great episode for you guys today. College football playoff predictions, finally. How's that? That's awesome. All That's right. perfect. Well, I didn't answer. Uh, my Christmas was good. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> we're past that. No, I didn't answer. Can't be passed until I answer. But it was good. I spent it with my parents, my two nieces, sister, her boyfriend, and had great banana pudding and brisket and, you know, homemade meals and shit. So it was a good Christmas, you know. And now we're here back in the Dun and Drew headquarters. And speaking of the Dun and Drew headquarters, for Christmas, I asked a lot of people, almost everyone, for just house decorations. So if you look, if you're watching on YouTube, you see we have new decorations in the house to make it feel more homey. We have a few more pictures up. We have a mirror uh, and you know, some knickknacks here and there. Make it uh, make it feel feel like home. And it is this Christmas tree when we burn it. <laughs> that's gonna that's gonna do a damage to the homey feel because there's nothing like. Nothing quite like a Christmas tree lit up in your living room. It's that's pretty great. I'm gonna have to replace it with a some kind of plant. Maybe put lights on it. Yeah, maybe put a palm some, tree. Put some over there, like a little little big pot plant over there, potted plant over there. Yeah, something. Figure but fake because I have I'm yeah, not good at keeping plants alive. Oh. Like I said, great episode for you today and throughout the week. Whenever you listen to this, college football playoff predictions. Um, and then the rest is pretty much all NFL all the time. Even got some Jaguars talk, surprisingly. Jacksonville is a clown show right now, and we have a very, very interesting guest to break it down with us. Mm. We'll get into that. Uh, stay tuned. See you on the other side. And I still won't grow up. 
I'm a grown ass kid. Swear I should be locked up for stupid sh that I did. But I'm a champion, so I turn tragedy to triumph. Yeah. Make music that's fire. Yeah. Get my soul through the wire. Busies are mid. Busies are mid. Mid. They're better than White Claw. They've got yes, that is true. They've got antioxidant and vitamin C in here, so I guess that's supposed to help with something. These are the when I say I take vitamins, this is what I mean. That's what you mean. What I I just discovered every fucking seltzer I see is a hundred calories. I guess that's one way that's to a, that's the to uh, improve competition. Yeah. We're all just, 100, oh, yeah, calories. hundred calories. But the Bud Light seltzer I had in the last pod was better than this. It was, uh, but Bud Light seltzer has like twelve variations. So. Blech. Um, they're all, some are disgusting, but the ones I was drinking last week were delicious. But you guys, if you're watching on YouTube, got this shirt on. It says, I hate MJF, a gift from John Michael. You've seen him in a lot of vlogs. Tonight, we are headed to AEW. They are coming back to Jacksonville. If you guys remember, we went to the last event here in August. That was my first time seeing it in person, even like looking at all at wrestling. And it was Andy's first time in person as well, but he's been watching for years. Was not my first time in person. Oh. But carry on. AEW though? Right. AEW in person. No. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Never mind. Andy's uh, a veteran in this game. But come for, for full circle, started. August kind of feels like the year that we started our time together in Jacksonville. I know we've been here since April, but August was like, boom, that's when we hit the ground running. That's when we did a bunch of shit. And now here we are at the end of 2021, finishing where we started out of the wrestling event. And a lot of things have gone down in the Jags organization since that last event. So we're going to, we don't know where our seats are. We're going to act a fool. I have a sign. He's got a sign. I'm going to be shouting. Should I no like, shouting. You know I don't shout. You know I'm, I'm going to Oh, gonna you're be, shouting. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to be shouting. A couple more Vizzies and you'll be shouting. So I have a sign. <laughs> That says, Tony, please save the Jaguars. We're going to get into what, like, why that says what it says when we have our guests on the show. And it, just a long story short, Tony Khan is the owner, Shot Khan's son. Um, he's about 40 years old. Looks and great. Looks great what, for 40. Oh, my God. He looks amazing for 40. No gray hair. Looks younger than us. Looks younger than us, pretty much. His energy is crazy. But he's successful at everything he does. And this AEW venture, Saving Wrestling, I want him to do the same for the Jags. But, unfortunately, he's just so busy with all the things that he does. And I feel like he wasn't uh, given the opportunity to take over this team. Um, so, this sign means nothing to him. Uh, means nothing in the long, the grand scheme of things um, for anyone that actually matters. But, it makes me feel good because I want him to save the Jaguars like he saved wrestling. Um, but, we'll get into it a lot more later on. Um, yeah, they, they, uh, want us to, they, I say they, you understand who they is later, but if you have a clown emoji with a mustache, you are, they, they want us to start a fire bulky chant tonight, but like different, different audience. Yeah. I don't think that's taken off different audience. I won't be the one starting it, but if I hear it, I'll join in. Can you imagine if it did? Like if there was <laughs> a bunch of Jags fans in the audience, that would be hilarious. Um, yeah, I can't wait for the event tonight. Um, I have never seen CM Punk in person. Um, MJF part and Eric Dunn part two. See what happens there. Um, oh my god! What else? But, Anything else I'm excited for? But like, if we don't, have, you don't, you don't want the same seats as last time because we couldn't hear nothing that they were saying on the mics. But yeah, it's it terrible audio. Great TV seat, but hopefully we're on the opposite side. You know, facing the ring from where the, the cameras are pointing so we can hear what the fuck's going on. And Andy got to see his wrestlers, you know, there's <laughs> wrestlers. Well, there's a bunch of new guys since we went last time. And I want you to get the best experience tonight. Oh, thanks. <laughs> uh, big, big news in the NFL this, this uh, week. Big news, sad news, sad, sad news. news. Yeah. John Madden passed, which is very weird because I, for some reason, I don't know if I've mentioned it on the pod, but in my head, at least, I was always like, where the hell is John Madden? Why isn't he, uh, why, why did he like completely fall, like disappear after leaving the booth? No appearances on NFL Network, and if there were, very slim. Um, he, no like special guest spots on the Manning cast, wouldn't that be amazing? 
And it's like, why is it, is John Madden even alive? And then they start doing this documentary and he dies. Crazy. Kind of weird timing. Weird there. timing. Not going to throw a conspiracy out there. Uh, but weird timing. Sad. Um, was an older man. 85. 85. Apparently it was um, out of nowhere too. It, it, like he didn't. Apparently he said no health issues. I don't think they said that, but they said it was a shock because like nobody was expecting this. It wasn't like Chadwick Boseman who had colon cancer and we didn't learn of that till he died. We don't know what's wrong with John Madden. We just, because you made a sound last night. We were on the couch here and he's like, oh my God. So naturally I opened Twitter because usually that's where you react from. And first thing I saw was John Madden died. So I thought that was what he was reacting to. I was like, oh shit, John Madden died. So my favorite call from madden's career is obviously a very very biased one and it's a it's a jaguars call and it's when in 2007 the jags made the playoffs beat pittsburgh in pittsburgh and david garrard had a very very probably his, his most memorable play outside of a hail mary for the jags and i pretty much as a kid because that was when i when i started liking the team I was like obsessed with the team. Contrary to now, um, where I try to tune them out. Um, so I like I consumed everything Jaguars. So I I was so obsessed with this team that I memorized that play call, and I did a little uh, <laughs> uh, sketch with me and my puppet. I had a puppet dog, and I did it for YouTube. This is eleven years ago on YouTube. Has a, over a thousand views. Old school Drew. And it's like me pretending I'm John Madden. Or me pretending I'm Jim Nance. Wait, who is it? Jim Nance? Uh, no. Who is it? Al Michaels. Al Michaels. And my dog puppet is John Madden. And we're just mouthing the words to this play. You still I, know it? If I still remember it, I'll, I'll try to sing along. Sing. So let me set it up for you. Uh, the, the Jags and Steelers are, uh, were tied or the Jags were down a couple points or one if they scored a field goal they would take the lead whatever the score was and the jaguars are sitting at fourth and two it's like late in the fourth it's like two minutes left in the fourth quarter and if they don't get it Steelers win the playoff game and go on to play new england this is new england's undefeated season and uh fourth and two david garrard in the shotgun jones drew i think or fred taylor one of them to his right or left, or maybe he's in complete shotgun. Oh, shit. Maybe I'm fake. Um, and it's Sunday Night Football. Jags probably haven't been on Sunday Night Football since. They have. But very, very rarely. I think once since. And uh, David Garrard takes off. He does a little quarterback draw and take, went, gets like 32 yards on fourth and two. So let's hear it. Fourth and two. The, the Jaguars, Jaguars survive. Garrard's going to run for the, the first down. down. And a lot more. He is inside the 20. He's down at the 10 yard line. He's tackled by Tyrell Carter. And now they back Pittsburgh into a situation where the Steelers are going to have to use their timeouts. Because all Jacksonville wants to do now is take the clock all the way down and kick a field goal. This is what an athletic quarterback does for you. In this situation. You, you need, need a big, big play. play, he, he takes, takes one look, it's, it's not there, and he just runs, runs it right up the middle, and he and has the ability and the talent to run with it. With it. <laughs> I mean, he doesn't spend a lot of time looking to see if he's, he's going to throw that. I think he had his mind made up. I have one fourth down, I have one play I have to make. I'm going to trust my legs. That's a 32-yard gain on a fourth and two, and they have forced Pittsburgh to use a timeout here. Now, guys, there were no lyrics on the screen for that one. That was completely off the dome. The dome. That's some unique shit, though. I don't know anybody that can memorize a broadcasting uh, play from a team. I've never yeah. heard of that before. Yeah, I've just heard that. I've watched <laughs> that highlight so many times. It makes sense, though, because it's probably like one of the only, you know, crazy plays we've had in team history. Yeah. Other than the signature, signature yeah. plays. Yeah, <laughs> signature plays. Um, And it's really funny because after that season... I think the reason why I'm so obsessed with that place because after that we were dog shit until 2017. So that's all I could hang my hat Jeez, on. Kind of similar to now, 2017, we've been dog shit since then. Mm -hmm. 
It's going to be another decade. Hey, 20, probably. 2027. There's nothing that's telling me it's not other than Trevor. Um, it don't fuck with my phone. I ain't touching your shit. <laughs> I was going to ask before you did that if you knew if you could do like a John Madden impression. Ah, uh, yeah, like not. <laughs> yeah. I used to watch Frank Caliendo. He used to do Oh, he's shit. great. <laughs> I'm sure he's done one on TikTok, Frank, to pay tribute to John. Probably has. John, he's, like I know him. He's got the best John Madden impression that I've ever seen. He's got the best impression of a lot of people I've ever seen. Mad TV goat. Oh, like, is that where he started? I don't know where it started, but I think he I think he started. Mad Frank TV. Caliendo once also had his own show. It only lasted like a season. He his I just heard his Joe Rogan today. His Joe Rogan. I don't know if you know exactly. I don't know. You probably don't watch a lot of Rogan, but I know he's his Joe Rogan's amazing. He pull that up. Is that... Is that him, Peter Parker? Oh, my God. Wow. Was that Peter Parker? The guy right in there. Yeah. Jamie, pull that up. That's, <laughs> is that him? Who's he fighting? Who's he fighting there? Oh, my God. Who's he fighting? Oh, my God. That's crazy. Jamie, pull that up. Is that, is that him, Peter? Amazing. Let's see what he said about John Madden. And Joe Rogan's not like a voice that's like crazy different. So to be able to react, yeah, to, yeah, 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 to exactly. React that is is wild. He has not done a John Madden tribute since a damn all of his fucking TikTok hits over a million. He was on Gary V once, and Gary V was telling him to do this shit. It's oh, yeah. like, bro, you're yeah, gonna blow up. Him. Oh, telling him to make TikToks. Yeah, like telling him like this is the what you need to be doing. Mm-hmm. I think he was on Gary V. He's on someone. He had a yeah, he had a talk with someone. I think it was Gary V. Uh, but ah oh, man, he hasn't done John Madden yet. Since well, he died. he's fucking amazing at his craft. So let's hear his Trump. I know his Trump's uh. right. I love Trump. Here's how you do a Donald Trump impression. Oh. First, I love Trump impressions. He cut me off. <laughs> Come on, we all know what you like. Make a face like you're looking into an aquarium and mimicking the fish. This is enough. Second, force a lot of air through as you're talking while saying phrases like "a lot of people are saying" <laughs> along with words like "probably" and "quite frankly." Yeah. I didn't want the tutorial. It's kind of cool. tutorial, but it, it was accurate. <sighs> it was. Um, is what it wish? Oh, I was gonna say, what was your favorite Madden game? Yes. What I mean, did. every. I see. I'm not old enough, and I'll get roasted for not saying 04 because I'm just not old enough to have played 04 or have been a fan long enough to play 04. Um, I don't. I probably the one with Fitz and Palomalu on the cover. That boy said 2010. That was the last one I played. I believe that was Madden 09. My Madden. first, my first. Oh, Madden Ten. I think you're right. My first one was Marshall Falk on the cover with O three. My O three. Goodness. My aunt got me. That was my first game. It was that Need for Speed. That was my first game for PlayStation Two. I should clarify. Place. I got a PlayStation Two for Christmas. My aunt gave me Madden two thousand three. Marshall Falk. That was the first time I ever played a football video game. Was that eighteen years ago? So I was ten. I would been a Jags fan for two years at this point, only two years. So I didn't know what I was getting into at 28 now. But I always remember that cover because it was the first game I ever got. And I would only play football video games. Madden, I would get every year, and college football video games. Did I you have NFL year. Street? My cousins did. So we played. <sighs> I played with them over there Bro, in Orlando. I fucked people up with Byron Leftwich on NFL Street and Fred Taylor. Is it the same as NFL people, Blitz? People, I say people. Different? I play the computer. You can't play online. I feel Blitz. They different? Blitz uh, Street? Yeah, it's different. Um, but yeah. And and then 2005, I was like, let me try ESPN 2K5. And that game was fucking just way different than what we were ever experienced. Because they had highlights of the, the simulated games. That was like the most amazing shit back then. Like, we have never seen that before. And 2K doesn't even fucking make football games anymore. But if we ever get a 2K... I'm NFL done, game back. That. I'm done with that. Or an NCAA game back. I will get a console and Thank run you. that shit back. And we'll do a tournament for real. <laughs> a, a my coach tournament or something. But um as we get older, we're gonna see a lot of legends die. And this is just another example. But legends never die though. Heroes get remembered. Their legacy lives on. Yes. Is it wishful thinking to, to hope that John Madden was the person holding back Madden game from being great? Like, I want to I want to hope that the reason Madden the game sucks is because him, and now he's gone and it'll be good. Mm. But that's probably not the case. I don't think so. Probably still gonna suck. Yeah. He probably had no idea 
what that was just his name. He had yeah, he, just, he didn't pass just his name. He didn't pass on any like he didn't say, All right, that looks good this year. He's he's had no say Send in it out. video games. Just his name, his branding and Imagine they have him test test play it. <laughs> <laughs> I can't was he Bill Cosby? That's, that is not Bill Cosby. That's how Frank Caliendo does the the laugh, John Madden's uh, laugh. Yeah, <laughs> but um, it's all on him. I assume he'll be on the cover of one of the next ones. Yeah, should be. Has he been on any? Uh, yeah, he's he was on he was on one of them. Oh, uh, don't remember which one. Here's a hot take. This is great. This is good stuff right here. <laughs> Don't click it. I'll read it. I was curious. Dr. Andrew McGregor. Uh, he's not verified. That would have made it more fun. But he does have 3,000 followers. He's a uh, sports studies influencer, professor of history at Dallas College. Study of race, sports, politics. So this man, I'm about to read you his tweets, teaches tweets. kids. Te- teaches students. He says, I have lots of opinions on John Madden. The creation of the Madden video game was not a great development for the United States. It further glamorized violence and dehumanized black athletes, helping to establish plantation cosplay that has grown worse in the era of fantasy football. The video game distanced the reality of the violent sport from fans and transformed human behaviors into artificial numbers and simulations. It glamorized athletes using their name for profits while encouraging fans to disregard the humanity. Madden built a digital plantation. At every point in his career, coach, announcer, video game producer, John Madden profited off of black athletic labor and glamorized the violence inherent inherent in the game. He became ubiquitous and grew the NFL into the most popular game and hastened the development of esports. Or hastened. Um, it's like I on crack. Made him want to tweet that. Do you um, have any explanation? Because he's a he's a. Uh, <laughs> I think he's trying to get points, but uh, he was uh, ratioed hard. Yeah, no shit. A lot of reactions, but ratio hard. Someone actually went out to went into his old tweets and he found found when he was uh, actually talking about the game. Yeah, like playing Madden, <laughs> saying he just won a game or something. He was like, "This you?" He got like fourteen k, fourteen k likes. Some people like to just go on Twitter, and <sighs> say those wild things for their little bit of attention that they'll get. Well, he successfully did that. He's teaching that though. He's teaching that. He probably did a little blurb about it today in class. That's crazy. I need to see that PowerPoint because that shit don't make no damn sense. <laughs> that PowerPoint. That shit don't make no damn sense, Professor. Has like, oh. <laughs> because they make, they've make they made video games for every fucking sports league. And there's there. white players in Madden. Yeah. And there's NHL video games, and that's all white guys. Doesn't make so any sense. So good. I love it. Um, Plan- all right. Plan- plantation franchise. But Damn. I don't have one of these, but... We are the kings of the weekend. Oh, I love when that drum solo Leo. rides out because Andy's been cutting it off lately. Someone tweeted us or DM'd us or something saying, hey, man, stop cutting off kings of the weekend. <laughs> and I felt bad. So I will never cut off kings of the weekend again. But I'm going to keep my guard up anyway because yeah, you, should. you might sneak a button press in there. Uh, kings of the weekend, it's a small list this week because it was Christmas. We don't really think about none of y'all, and y'all are probably minding your own business too. But mine goes to Zach Wilson because he uh, he beat his number one draft pick. He was second. Trevor uh, was first. Zach Wilson looked much better out there, not in terms of throwing, just, you know, he won the game and had a 52-yard rush touchdown, mm. even though the defense for the Jags looked like they didn't give a fuck about tackling him. But – Zach Wilson gets the dub there. He's a king, and he, whatever kind of, we don't know what he's doing personally in his own, like, inner circle. Probably There were probably some bets amongst his friends saying, hey, you got to beat him. He was picked ahead of you or something like that. I'm sure that happened. And he had bragging rights now because he beat Trevor Lawrence. He had that sick touchdown. Touchdown was sick. Sick. Like, sick, I'm going to puke? <laughs> Both. Sick, oh. that I'm going to puke, and like, damn, I wish... I could ever get a play like that. Even the the lowly Bro, Jets. Trevor does that, and I'm memorizing the broadcast <laughs> even, lyrics. Even the lowly Jets can do crazy plays on us. It's, it's insane. And that rush actually set a record for longest 
forget what it was. So it's the longest rushing touchdown in Jets quarterback history. Jets quarterback history. Crazy. But Zach Wilson is my king of the weekend. He's a king for beating the fuck out I of I tried us. really hard to find a king of the weekend. I couldn't. Actually, I could do a quick search to see if anyone's reviewed us on Apple recently. Let's see here. How real are y'all? Ooh, doesn't look promising. <laughs> and no. But we are still five stars, so. Thank oh, you easy. Easy five stars. Oh, also, there's, um, you guys can now rate us on Spotify. So if you listen on Finally. Spotify, give us a rating. And we can, I don't know if you can leave reviews, but you can definitely rate us. So I've left a rating. I don't know if Andy uses Spotify. I think he does. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I live on Spotify. Um Leave us a rating, five stars, and thank you very much. All right, voicemail time. Let's hear what y'all had to say in the past week about NFL college basketball, et cetera. Mm -hmm. NFL college, comma, college basketball, comma, (laughs) basketball. Let's get into these voicemails. Scared me. All right, our first voicemail of the week came from Tyler Grillmaster McWilliams. He sent this one in two days ago. Let's see what it says. Raiders related, maybe, probably. Probably. I can guarantee it. What's up, boys? Uh, it's halftime of the Raiders Brokos game. And I just watched a fucking disaster happen. You know what I told you last week? They got one half to keep me alive. Thanks. Bye. Uh, did he? Uh, oh, so if he so loses, he's killing himself. Oh, so he's going to check in probably after the game. Yeah, probably. Raiders won. Yeah, they did win. Yeah, they so I can't wait. Yeah, let's hear it. Uh, next one comes from Nick Griffin. He says, first time caller, long time listener, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> All right, let's see. Hey, guys. This is Nick calling so in from Buffalo. Big fan of the show. Been listening since my senior year of high school. I'm in my senior year of college now. So yeah. I don't pay for the Patreon. Loving that. But happens. I want a koozie giveaway. So I'm one of the realest fake ones out here. Mm. To get to the point, I've got two shout outs this week. One is from a main man, Eric. I've been loved seeing your cock tails all over my feed. Oh, yeah. They make me just want to gulp all of your cock tails down. Been loving the Jaguars posts. Second, it's my main man, Andy. Habitual Bills hater said the Bills would finally be buried this week. <laughs> well, they weren't, and we're still here. Hate on Josh Allen and the Bills all you want, but he's better than Trevor will ever be. Right, Hate on X, it? Jesus. Just know in your heart, it's true. Love you guys. Have a good pod. Bye. Bye. Thanks for the call. And you yeah, are so Yeah, don't right. be a stranger. It is the Bills year. All right. Go back to the episode where we predicted the Super Bowl. Bucks, Bills coming at you in February. Who I, 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 I Chiefs Rams. You still, we still got Bro, it. Oh, we, we looking nice. It. We looking good. We looking good. <laughs> Uh, thanks, Nick. Uh, Nick. Don't be a stranger. Yes, I did predict the Bills to get buried by the Patriots. Yeah. I should have known they would be would they be out for revenge. You know, every time you make a wrong prediction, when you see what actually happened, you, you're like, oh, how the fuck did I know that? Why did I know that was going to happen? Uh, what else? Trevor Lawrence will, is or Josh Allen's better than Trevor. Okay, okay. <laughs> I can't say anything. Got nothing there. Got nothing to say. Uh, but. But uh, don't be a stranger. But thanks Nick. for thanks for loving my cock. Tails. Tails. Oh, here comes Tyler. Let's see. Raiders just won. All right. Tyler here again. Uh, end the game update. I can't complain a ton. We beat the Broncos 17-13, so I'll take it. I think this puts us in eighth overall in the AFC. So still got to win out. Um O-line played pretty well. Defense played really well. We gave them 10 points with the fumble. Did they kick the field goal down? And then Derek throwing a fucking, trying to throw over to D-lineman. Throwing a pick and almost taking back to the house. So that's another touchdown right there. Um, so really, like, defense really gave up three. I mean, obviously 13, but three points. You know, our defense looked pretty good. Uh, but, yeah, Derek's going to have to play a lot better against the Colts. I don't know. How, I don't think we're going to win that game, but. Yes, anything's possible. Fuck. See, now I got my fucking hopes up, and I'm gonna have to kill myself after next week's game. It's gonna be great. Um, yeah, uh, live to uh, see another week. Love you guys. Bye. Love to see another week. <laughs> oh man. See you in San Diego, Tyler. I can't wait. Uh, Carson Wentz out with COVID, so Sam Ellinger starting versus the Raiders. But how about a round of applause or a celebration for the Broncos finally being under 500? Finally. I've been, I mean, I've been waiting for that for all season. 
but they kept treading water. That's coaching job to keep that team above 500. Um, great, great pieces. Just like the quarterback, you just kept kept winning in spite of the despite or in spite of the mid. quarterback. Very mid. God. Oh, that was my idea that over the break. This button needs to be him saying mid. Oh, mid. Yes. <laughs> Fuck. The, but, m- 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 mid. Yeah, 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 yeah. We can we can make that happen. Yeah, we'll make that happen by next episode. <laughs> next, okay. It's not a bark. Uh, that was a bark. Next one from Ryan Scallet. That was Seacrest. Homer take. So this is. What up, guys? It's Ryan calling in from Austin, Texas. And for once, I'm actually going to come on here and talk about, you know, I'm going to brag a little bit about my team, all right? The Cowboys are looking solid. Well, yes, it was only the football team. It was still 56 (laughs) points. And I don't know, it's the first time in my life that the defense has been good and the offense has been good. I mean, the defense has never been good, but I mean... I know you guys hate homos, I mean homers, but I don't know, I just have, I finally feel good about this, like, <laughs> I don't know, like, this season feels different, hopefully that means that postseason success will come, and not just, you know, getting kicked out the first round by the Packers, anyways guys, love you, have a good rest of the podcast. Thank you, Ryan, yes, I'm happy for your Cowboys, but 50 something points. Did you, you watch that game? 56. It's like they didn't stop scoring. It was crazy on defense and offense. My dad watched it. Ooh. I think I was watching a movie with uh, my sister. Yikes. Uh, when my dad walked in the living room, he was like, 21 nothing, first quarter. I was like, Dad, your team's buns. Why are you watching this game? Why is he doing football? <laughs> While he's wearing a Redskins shirt, probably. Yo, he got, he gets like, <laughs> Fuck. I was trying to do that shit inside my shirt, man. That shit all over the mic. I'm sorry. But don't look at me like that. You just did that shit before we started. Saw that shit. On the mic? There. Yeah. Okay. Are we clean? Um, but yeah, he he gets Washington football shit every se- every uh, Christmas, and I'm like, damn. I can't imagine being a fan of that team. That t- that's like one of those teams where you're like, eh, eh, eh. What have you done for me lately? <laughs> it's, been a, it's been quite some time. Like, I don't even know any Washington fans. Like, uh, there's like three. Diggs, of course, got a pick. Yes, did see that on Twitter. Micah Parsons, he just not, he can't stop him. I saw two. I saw a pick six from Lawrence, Demarcus Lawrence too. Um, everybody on the Washington team went under. It was just a terrible game for them. Um, but Cowboys, this is gonna be. This is not my game of the week, but it is one of the best games this weekend. Cowboys Cardinals. Fraudinals, you mean? No, I don't mean fraudinals. They're frauds. They're not going to win the Super Bowl, but they're not frauds. Okay, finally. I, what if I said they're going to win the Super Bowl? Ah, maybe you haven't, but, you, uh, but now that you you're know, saying you that's know definite. I, you know I've been riding their dick only because fantasy. That's the only reason. I made hey, this speaking game. of that, you've gone this long without saying you were in the fantasy championship game. Well, I did. I Versus this next man. Oh. John Michael. He drops. Begay. Scared. This is John Michael from Jacksonville, Florida, and all I gotta say is that Shad Khan and Trent Balky are bitch ass motherfuckers. They don't do fucking shit right. I just am a loss for words that they are even considering or potentially going through with Trent Balky getting interviews. They're sitting in that fucking room giving interviews. It is the most frustrating thing in the world to be a Jags fan. I legit don't know how we fucking do it. How much money I spent for this team, especially on season tickets this year. I'd rather off just going on road trips for next season if they really do keep bulky, man. Oh my god. I mean, that's all I really got to say. It's just physically and mentally hurts. Just, ugh. Mm. Have a good rest of your night, guys. Mm. No mention of the championship game with you. No, that's how much. Scared. That's how much Trent Balky is. The news of Shad Khan, which came out this past week, uh, retaining Balky, who has been a cancer in every team that he's been a part of. Very toxic individual, allegedly, <laughs> reportedly. Like, everyone in league circles knows this. I've heard people say all week, all Shad has to do is just ask around. Pick up the phone and call a few people. Most of everyone you, you talk to is going to say, yeah, don't keep that guy around. He's a snake, 
and he's not good at his job. And here we are. We can never do a full measure, full reset. We, we got to always keep someone behind. And this time it's Trent Baalke again. And it's it's all right today. We saw Dan Quinn turn down an interview with the Jags. Good. Yes, thank you. Hopefully that means, <laughs> hopefully Shot Khan is seeing this. And we're going to talk to someone. It's a little teaser. We'll set in the, laying the groundwork for our interview later. Um, it's going to be a good combo. So we'll, we'll dive into that. Uh, it's very interesting. And if he ends up getting, if he ends up getting fired, you will, then like Jaguars Twitter in this movement with the clown avatars is like going to be, go down as their best work, our best work. <laughs> um, backtrack, John Michael. I love the idea of using that season ticket money to go to road games. Let's do it. Fuck the home games. Unless, you know, we'll see how this turn bulky situation goes, how the draft goes, but it doesn't go how we want. I'll see you in uh, who the fuck we play. NFC East. See you in Lincoln Financial. Mm. Uh, all right, here we go. Hunter, I miss you. Hey, what up, Dun and Drew? Your boy survived the Florida Daddy HQ Omnicron virus. <laughs> you know, hashtag surviving Dun and Drew. <laughs> But let's just cut to the chase. You know why I'm here. David Bills. Would you rather oh. be getting head from somebody that has braces and get a chunk of your skin ripped off? Or, hypothetically, you're getting fingered by someone that just got done eating the blazing hot buffalo wings huh. at Buffalo Wild Wings on a wing Wednesday. Love you guys. Talk to you later. That's an easier one. Cause you, well, you eat the spicy shit all the time. Yeah, I would much prefer my hole being fingered than a chunk of my cock coming out with braces. Me too, but just know that it's going to be excruciating pain because when we shit out spicy foods, it's been processed in our stomach and the spice has been died down a little bit. Mm -hmm. Imagine if there's no filter. It's going straight in your hole. (laughs) Straight sauce. (laughs) It's going to suck. It's going to suck, especially for me, who I talked about um, on the last podcast, I talked about my hole just being completely destroyed. Um, from eating spicy food last yeah, week. I'm aware. Yeah. And now I'm recovered. Thank you for asking. Um, but if that finger with the spice went in my hole, ooh, 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 I'm cringing right now. That's tough. Would you rather have a chunk of your meat off? No. Which is why I got to choose the finger. We have plenty of things in there to make your hole nice and <laughs> soothed after. But it does. I've When I did a hot sauce video... It dumped hot sauce on my chest. It burns, guys. Oh, my God. It burns. That's tough. Oof. Just my don't chest. Want that. Just my chest. It was fine. A little Franks. Thanks for the call, Hunter. I'm surprised you didn't mention anything about your Texans destroying the fuck out of the, the Chargers, but I guess you don't give a fuck. What a weird year. Very weird. Weird season. Poor Chargers fans, whoever that is. Flamingo. <laughs> yeah, Flamingo ad boy. Like, what a weird franchise to, like, you're finally like supposed to be good, but there's some curse laying like hovering over that team. That's just like, nah, it was a you're good on paper, but you're never going to be good. Good Four of their offensive you players may, are out. You may have a top five quarterback, but you're not. Hey, no, sorry. You're never going to get there. Um, I blame Omni. Next one. Zachary Frelich is his comment is pain. I'm guessing he's a Jags fan. Good boys. It is Zach from Gainesville, Florida. I'm sure you know what this is about. We lost to the damn UCF Knights. Pretty much the worst send off I could have got as a graduating senior, Gators. going six and seven, losing to UCF. But, you know, guess it is what it is. Um, other than that, you know, NFL is pretty awful. The Ravens are just absolutely decimated and. Got blown out to the Bengals, which means our playoff hopes are pretty much done. But, uh, you know, at least it's not as bad as the Jags. I really do feel for you. Why the hell y'all keeping your GM? Get rid of that man, implode the franchise, and just start from scratch around Trevor Lawrence. It don't make no sense, but love y'all. Have a great rest of the pod. You're speaking to the choir. 
Yeah, I had no idea where. I swear he was going to talk about something else, anything else than Florida, UCF. UCF. <laughs> hey, we had to talk about it, so he, there it is. He said, I'm sure what you guys know this is about. Yeah. I'm, uh, UCF. <laughs> yeah. Nope, actually Who? did not. Just kidding. Did um, not know that. Yeah, so. we're we're waiting patiently and anxiously about you know our GM situation, so I'm sure it will come uh, in the news in the next like month or so, probably less, but... But it will come in the, yeah, come in the next couple of weeks. We'll uh, we'll know soon, and I believe this movement will work. It's crazy. They don't Fan, say. I don't, don't know if fans strength in numbers for nothing. I don't know if fans have ever caused the firing of someone. Maybe, maybe in Philly. But if you're in Philly, you probably just chalk it up as Philly fans. This is extreme. Like if you go down the Jaguars Twitter. Click on every, or you don't even have to click anything. Just look at the numbers. Just go to one of uh, the interactions. Any of our, uh, e- any of either of our last tweets that have done numbers, and just look at, click on likes and who liked it, and just scroll. <laughs> just scroll, and you'll understand what we're talking about. Just all um, clowns. Yeah, all clowns. All right, next one. We made it. <laughs> if you could have told me that back when we drafted Trevor Lawrence. That the end by the end of this season, Urban Meyer would be fired. We would still be retaining Trent, and Trevor Lawrence has <laughs> not thrown a passing touchdown in what six, seven weeks. Eight. Um, I'd call you fucking crazy. I don't know what needs to be done to help this fucking team, but God, I just want a winning season. 2017 Winning, was shit. so amazing. <laughs> Give I me seven and ten. That feeling back again. It's gonna be a decade, buddy. And I am very scared that I'm not gonna get that feeling back for a very long time. <laughs> very long. So God, please, please, nope, Jag gods, <laughs> help us. Fuck. <laughs> not a religious podcast. <laughs> yeah. You're looking in the wrong places. That voicemail was what we've been talking about for every episode of the past three months. But nobody knows what's going to happen. We're not going to get a winning season for quite some time. We just need to take baby steps. And that baby steps is getting rid of the GM. First step. Uh, this is uh, Joshua Hafine, Huff- something like that. Screwshot Khan. Oh, boy. Here we go. Hey, what's going on, Dunn and Drew? This is Josh, uh, big time Jags fan, uh, long time listener, first time caller. Love uh, those talking about the Trent Baalke move, retaining Trent Baalke on the Jags. It's just a a wildly disappointing move. Um, I think I hate this move more than I hate Urban Meyer, but there's a lot of things that could, uh, I could top that, but um, it's just disappointing seeing this uh, over and over again. Shad Khan failing to clean house uh, like he always does. It's just Guess he didn't know there was a one minute time. Was that a minute? No, that was thirty three. Maybe he calls back, but yes, agree with you. Uh, next one. Oh, Dunn Collins. He's a friend of the Discord. Tied versus Cincy oh, God, over he's, height. He's talking about college, buddy. Yo, what's up, Dunn and Drew? It's Diesel calling in from Birmingham this time. I'm not in Tuscaloosa because I'm home for the holidays. Um. Tomato. We got tied football <laughs> against Cincy Friday. The spread is 13 and a half. Um, I'm kind of interested to see this matchup. A lot of people aren't You're really talking fan. about it. I was about to say, we almost jinxed. <laughs> because everyone's more focused on Georgia and Cincy, uh, Georgia and fucking, who are they playing? Michigan. Uh, but, I don't know your uh, opponents, Cincinnati's boy. undefeated. Sorry. You know, they okay. haven't lost a game this year. They're going to come in. Guns blazing. I like he's trying to be. I'm humble. not saying I'm <laughs> nervous about the game. I'm just saying you that go. you know this isn't just some kind of exhibition game. You yeah, know, might be. So I will be locked in for that game. Roll Tide. Have a good podcast. Love you, boys. Peace. <laughs> I there's no way as a Bama fan you're even slightly afraid of Cincinnati. Slightly. Really. You just beat Georgia. I think they should be. They lost to TAMU. They just beat Georgia. Who gives a fuck about TAMU? They got up for for Georgia. That's why. They fucking just beat Georgia, who everyone said was the best team in since the he league. Since he can beat Bama. Have you watched one since no. he's going to be able to make that team? Next. <laughs> Caller. 
Hey, what's up, boys? It's uh, Sergio or Torres904 on the Discord, calling in from Jacksonville. I'm at work right now, but, you know, you know, I got to sneak out to talk to the boys. That's a, why I hear all the shit behind me. But uh, y'all probably already talked about it, but what's y'all's opinions on, you know, Sean Keith and Trent Bauke? You know, he hasn't really done shit for us this past offseason. He didn't really wow anyone at what he did. And considering this is a really important offseason coming up just for just every, everything with how shitty this team is right now. What's y'all's opinion on him, him still being here? And, you know, him obviously swaying in some way who the next head coach is going to be. Uh, if y'all already talked about that, uh, well, I guess I'm just fucking talking at this point. But, no, it's uh, a rant. That's good. You boys. I hope y'all had a Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. If we're going to get into something later, then you just the floor is open for you to rant. So we are going to talk about that later. So um, I'm glad you got your, your moment to rant. Extensive knowledge coming for all you Jags fans calling about Balky. So. We will get to that extensively soon. Next caller, we're going to Iowa. T. Gozy, friend of the podcast. Yo, it's Everyone's your boy, T. Gozy. Uh, I got a question for you. I tried to I tried to leave a voicemail last week, and you must have ignored me, buddy. So <clears throat> here it is. I, I just want to see how desperate you guys are because mm. the Jags Pretty are desperate. ass right now. Yo, a bunch of clowns. Uh, I'm, oh, I like I'm loving the movement, by the way. It's fucking hilarious. <laughs> but here's the proposal that I got for y'all, and I ain't talking about any insurance. <laughs> so, you guys got to replace Urban Meyer, so we're gonna put uh, John Gruden at head coach <laughs> and at assistant coach. You're gonna put Chris Doyle, another former uh, Jaguar, for about a week. Um, Two racist coaches. I want to see, see how desperate you are here. If you'll throw the morals and the ethics aside, because the trade-off is you guys get back-to-back Super Bowls. Are you signing the dotted line? What Are you the hiring fuck? these motherfuckers? Are you going to lose any sleep? Let me know. First of all, I'm not throwing any morals aside hiring them. Y'all know me. I'm just kidding. That's a, that a total joke. Relax. I'll take it. But obviously, I don't <laughs> give a fuck. John Gruden. I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna, I'm not going to lose sleep on that. John Gruden could email Stephen A. and call him a nigger. As long as he's getting me a championship ring. Why Stephen A? That's what I can think of. At ESPN. Jesus. <laughs> Give me the rings, Gozy. What the fuck? Come on, now. Come on. Fire him after the season. Fire him after the season. Strength conditioning coats, call him whatever you want. If you're getting that ring, I'm here for it. <laughs> See, I can say that. <laughs> <laughs> If Andy said that, everybody would be like, whoa, 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 whoa. But here, Dun and Drew, got to balance. Mm -hmm. Got to balance. Um, Gruden and Doyle? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Double up? Yes, double up. Come on down, guys. Give me that ring. Bring us the rings. Eric took the words right out of my mouth. Easy (laughs) easy question, Gozy. Uh, All right, next one. Bryce. Because like I said, like I said, like, if Urban was winning... Yeah, so he probably still be coach. His all the his bullshit would have never came out. So, winning does winning hides all the bullshit. So, uh, most of it, I would say, grew to their year. They were starting pretty good this year. The Raiders, mm. yeah. So, winning can so, only do too, so much unless you know you do some racism. We, we, we still don't know a lot about that Gruden situation. It kind of like got hidden. There's probably a lot more out of out of there. But someone just, I hope they, I hope they have something on Trent Balky in there somewhere. Someone's out to get Gruden. And they got him, so he must have made somebody mad or something, but there's a lot more to that. All right, Bryce, what you got? Yo, what's up, Dun and Drew? This is Bryce calling from Ohio. I just got one quick question for y'all. Um, what is your favorite retro sports logo? It can be any sport, any team, that they don't use anymore and you wish they would bring back. For me, I'm not even a Detroit Pistons fan, but my favorite retro logo of all time is their old one where they were uh, like the aqua green, red, and yellow. And it was that uh, logo with the word Pistons where the S's were exhaust pipes and it had the horse coming out of the logo. uh, And it had like red and yellow flames as its main. That is honestly my favorite retro logo of all time. And so I was just wondering what your guys' favorite choice would be. So, uh, thanks for taking the time to listen to my voicemail. Have a great rest of the pod. See you. 
I think Eric and I are both doing a little quick little Google searches. I wanted to look up that logo because I knew it had a horse in it, but I couldn't really remember what exactly it looked like. I knew I didn't even realize there were exhaust pipes coming out of the S's. But I love the the, the NBA ones are the best ones. Like the old NBA logos are all the best ones. I'm very biased, but the Jaguars original logo of the leaping Jaguar rather than the head, it was very good. The Jaguars OG uniforms are, are top three in the league. If they brought them back. Um, I love when the Patriots do their throwback. Um, it's not the Patriots head. It's like the, this is, no one's going to guess this one. What? But oh, I, yeah, it's the Patriot that's, like, in a hiking position. That's pretty sick. Oh, yeah, yeah. I like the old Raptors and Grizzlies ones where they have the actual animal holding a basketball. Like, that old Raptors one is sick with the Raptor with mm-hmm. the basketball dribbling a basketball. And the Grizzlies one with the basketball in his hand, the NBA ones where they implemented, like, the actual animal with the basketball in it are the best NBA logos, in my opinion. I like the old Magic logo. Not too much different than the current one, but more stars and more cartoonish. I like that one a lot. Um, we need to update our logo so people can be nostalgic about us. It's true. We need to get a shittier logo so people can be like, oh, you remember that old <laughs> Dun & Drew logo? That shit was fire. We do got one sitting in our uh, brown Oh, shit, sure we do. There. We do. All right, next one. Richard uh, Breyer. McCoy. Yo, Don and Drew. This is Ricky, a.k.a. Crypto Ice in the Discord. Mm-hmm. Uh, first time called, a long time listener. Love those. As Love a those. fellow residential man of pov- poverty for the Texans. Shout out, Hunter. Oh, shout out, shit. my man, Hunter. Uh, I know that we're going to end up at the top of the draft together. So, uh, who do y'all see top five coming our way? Like top five picks in the NFL draft. Uh, I think that's it. Y'all have a good uh, good rest of the pod. Enjoy your night, guys. Holla. Holla. Crypto Ice. Unfortunately, that name does not ring a bell from the Discord. <laughs> but uh, nice to hear from you. Thank you for calling in. Top five draft picks. I know you're going to say it. We don't fucking know because... We only know Aiden and KT. Yeah, there's... Uh, just I just pulled up a recent mock draft by PFF. They have... And Evan Neal. Jags taking Hutchinson, which is who I want, number one from Michigan. And then KT, K, K, Kayvon Thibodeau from Oregon. Um, the tackle, people say he's amazing. Like, could be a future Hall of Famer. Evan Neal from Bama. Um, Texans, you could easily wind up with him, protect Davis Mills, because it looks like you guys <laughs> have to stick with him. Derek Stingley, looks like someone got a corner, LSU. Mm-hmm. Um, George Carl Aftis from Purdue, he's an edge rusher. Charles Cross, Mississippi State, he's okay. a he's a tackle. So this is going to be a... Yeah, yeah, it's it's a boring draft. <laughs> this is going to be a non-skill position year. Yeah, unfortunately. But we do have uh, later in the draft. Oh, there's a Willis. There's a quarterback named Willis from Liberty. Interesting. Liberty. Going in the top 12. That's very interesting. Where can he pick it at? Oh, they have a they have a uh the Ohio State wide receiver Garrett Wilson going 13. Where I want to see where uh He's good. I want to see where Jefferson? Yeah. No. What's his name? Oh. Doesn't Jameson. Jameson. Yeah. I always they, say Jefferson. They have him going to the Raiders at 18. <clears throat> That's who I want. Yikes. But he's not going to last. Hopefully he doesn't go to the Raiders. Don't want to end up like the other guys that go there. Greg's. Chill. And who else? He went to Bama as well, too. Uh all right. Oh, it looks like Rich uh Richard or Crypto Ice has one more thing he says. Crypto. Yo, it's Ricky again. I forgot to ask my question. Uh what top three franchises, whether it's like a movie series or a TV series or game like video game series, what top three franchises do you feel like you don't care about, but everybody else cares about? Mm. All right, guys, have a good one. So the most popular ones? It used to be Marvel for me until I did my binge this year to catch up. Oh, franchise. I'm going to go The Office. Okay. For one of them. 
I know that uh, there's got to be a game franchise out there that a uh, Fortnite. Yeah, Fortnite. I uh, played it though, so I can't hate. Uh, Lord of the Rings, but I don't know if I mean mm. that's not super relevant today. I fucked with those. I try to stay up on all my shit. Um, MLB. Just kidding. Marvel, definitely Marvel. I'm just not. I'm not into like, like people like nut over just trailers. Mm. I don't give a fuck because they've been watching for so long. They've they literally binge like all these different Marvel movies and the Disney Plus, uh, independent shows that all connect to the theater movies. There's Star Wars. You don't care about Star oh, Wars. Yeah. Never seen Star Wars either. Um. Some guy actually made a Star Wars reference over a Christmas holiday in my neighborhood. And I was like, never seen him. He's like, what? The classics. I'll put the Pokemon video game franchise. Whoa. Out there. Whoa. Hold on. I'm talking about the ones. That, are you buying the ones that are coming out still? That's what I'm talking about. They keep coming out with people and go, the, people nut over those. talking about the new shit. Yeah. Okay. New shit. Okay. He said, I fuck with OG. DC. For the Nintendo I don't, Switches. I don't fuck with DC. Like. The Batman, the like, they had what's the what is the DC version of the Avengers that they had? The League of Justice League. Justice League. Yeah, I didn't fuck with that. Um, I can't. Th- oh, oh, God. Uh, Fast and Furious. I haven't seen oh, one. I've not, not seen one Fast oh, and sure. Furious. They started very good, but once they got like after the one with the Rock, I was like, I'm done. I think it was. Um, the one with Hobbs and Shaw was like the the one I never I didn't see anything from Hobbs and Shaw on. They're on fucking nine now. Relax, do something else. Hope that answered your question. Thank you for your call again. Love you, crypto. Ooh, what's good? It's Alex. Oh. oh, I'm in the car right now driving, so I apologize if my audio is a little whack. Uh, but just want to call in and say what's good. Uh, two weekends ago, whenever I found out about you guys' little uh, Discord link up, I got some major FOMO. Really wish I could have made it if I knew about it or if I knew about it sooner. But it is what it is. Really happy you guys had such a great time. Vlog was epic. Um, but yeah, we've got a uh, Daddy's Retreat 4.0 now to look forward to. San Diego, California. Can't wait to be out there with you guys. Going back Get to drunk. Diego. Enjoy the vibes that the city has to hold for us and burn that house on the hill to the ground. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, yeah, hey, you it's guys California. Can't be doing evening. that. Happy New Year. I hope you guys had a great Christmas. Much love. Catch you guys soon. Peace. He also left another one. See what he says. Done. Drew. What's good? Oh. It's Alex. Okay, so it looks like. Uh, it's sent twice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Alex, that is our say realist, realist listener that we have. Miss uh, you, Alex. I would say, yeah, I would say the most loyal, loyal to us. Yeah. I don't know. I don't even want to say that. Um, There's a lot of people that, I don't know. Moral, most moral. I don't know. Fuck uh, it. Loyal. I don't want to get the loyal. He holds the group together, at least. Only him. He's the glue. Um, but yes, looking forward to seeing you. We got Daddy's Retreat 4.0 in San Diego. One of my favorite cities now. So that makes it Fort Lauderdale, Arizona, Arizona, San Diego. San Diego. I'm going to get a new magnet for the fridge. He's beating his meat. Are. Why are you beating your meat? I'm not. I'm hitting my thigh. Oh, okay. It sounded, I swear you're beating your sound meat. different. No, I'm not. Uh, thanks for the call, Alec. Can't wait to see you. Hopefully it's before that retreat in July. What's up, everybody? We just got back from AEW. <clears throat> and while we were there, I think me and you were wearing the same boxers. No, oh. I got a different one. While we were there, we got some more voicemails, so let's hit those real quick. This is from Colin, Philly. You're... Oh, sorry, Austin. It's Thanks. Colin. It's like my third time trying this. Anchor is gay. Well, um, so the Eagles are going to the playoffs uh, of this, I've decided. Not because of our coach, but because of uh, Jalen Hurts. I like, I like him. I don't know if he's the answer. I don't know if he's the future, but uh, he's a he's a he's a fucking handsome. He's a handsome boy. Uh, he's a good looking. He's a good looking kid. Uh, you know, like strikingly good looking. Um, is he blacked? 
Oh, yeah, I finally watched Mary Town. I was telling Andy about that the other day. It's crazy. They filmed that in my hometown. Mary it's pretty cool. All the characters are wearing like Eagles jerseys and shit, you know, and uh, they all talk like, hey, look, you going home or you going in, you going to make it to class, you know, shit like that. Uh, quick, would you rather, um, <laughs> would you rather have a threesome with Kyle Rittenhouse or George Zimmerman? <laughs> uh, Who's the third? Threesome. Oh, and then it cut off. <laughs> Um, oh, I guess he just means like a random girl. First of all, Colin, your voice is sounding very sexy tonight. So you put me in a mood. Uh, and uh, you blacked. <laughs> <laughs> you said the Eagles are making the playoffs. First of all, no. There's only one spot left in the NFC, and it's going to the Niners, buddy. Wait, who has the other spot? They have, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> they have, uh, everyone else has clinched, like the top, all the other seeds have clinched. Wait, how many teams make it? One, two, three, four, three five. Three wild card. Dallas, Rams, Bucks, and Cardinals have all clinched. So, <clears throat> I think 49ers going to get that spot. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, no, it's seven teams from each, and one gets a bye, right? You're asking the wrong dude. Damn. Eagles might make it then, Colin. I'm sorry. Um, no, it's cool. He wants them to make it. I know. I'm saying I'm sorry for being wrong. Uh, I'd rather have a threesome with George Zimmerman because Kyle Rittenhouse's face makes me want to just – I just want to punch him. I don't – just not a likable face. I'll go with Kyle. Is he 18? Yeah, he's <laughs> – wait. Yeah, he's 18. Yeah, I think so. He was 17 when he shot. He's 18 now. Wow. Um, it's crazy how you just go outside and you just, your eyes are watering, nose is stuffed. Yeah. It hit me yesterday. Allergies hit in me like a fucking bus uh, right now. It's crazy. I need flow nays. I'll be, I'll be good. Um, yeah, Mayor of Easttown. If you haven't seen it, it's on HBO Max. It's a great show. All right, next one. Abe. Yo, Dun and Drew, what's up, guys? So my bold prediction for this NFL season is the Cowboys guy that the Cowboys win the Super Bowl. Like, yeah, that's it. That's all I got. Um, Dak MVP, Trayvon Diggs Defensive Player of the Year, da, 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 da. Defensive Rookie of <laughs> the Year, Mike the McCarthy ball. Coach of the Year, Jeez. Dallas Cowboys Super Bowl champions, and Dak Prescott Super Bowl MVP. That's all I got. And yeah, how about them Cowboys? 11 and 4. We're going to finish the season probably 13 and 4 or 12 and 5. Or at least 11 and 6. You know, that's the worst we can do. Um, Eric, I know the Jaguars suck. Andy, I know the Jaguars suck. But how about them Cowboys? I don't know what it is, but I just can't see the Cowboys. In the Super Bowl, the memes, neither the stories that would it's just I, I can't. I, they, our they, whole life, they've just been one thing. They, they have the team to do it, but I just can't see it happening. Mm-hmm. I can't see it this year. Why do you think I'm crying? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. They just watering my boy. I'm cheery as ever. <laughs> uh, Abezo, nice try. Let's go to Lorenzo from Mass. Tevez. Uh, stadium question he has. Hey, Andy, Eric, this is Lorenzo from far from Massachusetts. Uh, this might be my first time calling in. I don't really what call a long often. time. First times to, um, but I am from Massachusetts and I was looking at these Jaguars Patriots tickets and they are absurd, which is a bummer because I really want to see Eric in life as a Jaguars fan in real life, but I'm broke. So shout out prize picks. Um, <laughs> so, I do have a question, Eric. I know you travel a lot, Andy. Yeah, I'm sure you've been to multiple stadiums. Can you rank top three stadiums, all sports? Thank you, guys. Oh. Happy New Year. Yeah, I, I want to do that justice. I haven't been to nearly enough stadiums to do that justice. I apologize. He says all you think, sports. You're thinking way too highly of me. I've only been to Bucks, Rays, Jags. I'll put Rays at the bottom. SoFi. <laughs> have you been? Rays, yeah, I've been to Tropicana. Tropicana, yeah, uh, yeah. I haven't been, to, I haven't been to enough stadiums, so I'm going to pass on that question. 
SoFi uh, would probably like. I wish our. I wish I. SoFi is pretty nice. SoFi is pretty nice. Texans was pretty nice. Every NBA stadium kind of the same. I think it's arena. Is it? it doesn't <sighs> fucking matter. Tomato, my, my biz. <laughs> God, how we jinx? I jinxed with the soundboard. Uh, um, if you guys aren't watching, I didn't see him press the button, so we jinxed. Um, so far, definitely at the top. NBA is just just mid to me. There's no like they're all the same arena that's like oh gotta go to this one. No, it's it's all the same pretty much. Uh, maybe the atmosphere is different based on the team, but um, they're all pretty much the same once you go inside. College. Ohio State, good atmosphere, but like I said, like you got to specify when you say like top stadium. Do you mean like atmosphere? Do you mean like visually? Because you know there's some dope atmospheres. And college would take the top of the board on all those. But if we're talking strictly NFL. I know you said all sports, but like you can't do all sports. Do NFL. SoFi, Lumen, mm-hmm. Seattle Seahawks, and Colts Stadium. Those are the top three for NFL. But Colt sounds like a library, so. <laughs> you want to go there for a litness? I don't know how that sounds. That ain't it. What's a library sound like? <laughs> oh, okay. <Yeah. laughs> All right, last one. Uh, Jake Deagle from Toledo. Done and Drew, baby. What's going on? This is Deagle Andrew, from baby. Toledo. Go ahead and hit a snooze button for Toledo. Yep. <laughs> AKA Twig Boy. If I was in a actual boot camp with all the people on that Discord server, I'd be in that lineup where Steve Rogers is in the first Captain America movie. Ah, uh, yes. If you know, you know. I know. I know. Yes, we know. Extremely yes. well. Anyway. Just got to gain a little weight here and there by eating more often and not more, right? Is that how it goes? Never heard that one. <laughs> Any well? Any well? God damn those Cardinals. My Cardinals. I don't even know if they're mine. I kind of want to disown them for how fraudulent they are. Saw it coming. You know, that first primetime game against the Packers. Come on. Yikes. Anyway. Anyway. I say anyway about five (laughs) times here, don't I? You do. I've been putting up with this for like 40 years, so I think I can put up with it for a little longer. I think it's a. It might be a Toledo thing, anyway. I think so, because he says that like very fluidly. Anyway. 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 Um,. Anyway, that's a good phone call. Uh, disowning the Cardinals, what are they? What's ten the record? Ten four or Shut ten up. five, bro? Please miss me, <laughs> miss me. All like right, best offense in the mm. league for nine weeks. You're fine. That is voicemails for this week. Let's hit an ad, but it's like an ad, but it's a fun ad. Prize good. picks, baby. Good. Uh, yes, guys, Don and Drew, as you guys know, is brought to you by Prize Picks. Over under daily fantasy app available in 27 to 28 states. If you know, you know. First time users can deposit and use code Dun and Drew to receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100. That means you deposit 50, Prize Picks will match you $50, max 100. Simple. You pick two to five players. And over under on their projections, and you can win up to 10 times on any entry. And it also allows for mixed sports entries available on both the App Store and Google Play. So let me get open prize picks. Let me take your phone. I'm going to run through some college football playoff entries, and you have to give me over unders. And this is your lock. I pick the player, you pick the over under. Let me see. You better pick somebody you know. Let me see it. What if we don't know the player? It, I'm, it's college football. You'll know him. <clears throat> no, it's, it's got to be like someone from the uh, the semifinal games. Right. Of course. I'm not going to pick a random ass bowl game. You think that's on there yet? Oh, it's not. How is it not? It's coming up like yeah, it's, it's in on, a few days. It's on Friday. Guess we'll do NFL. Sunday on there? Oh. Uh yeah, Sunday's on there. So it's a do uh awesome. do a four four player, not a five. No. If you do five, that's like a four. I'm piecemealing it. I just got a dub on a flex play, so I'm trying to. Jonathan Taylor over under a hundred and six point five rushing yards <sighs> versus the Raiders. Over. No Carson Wentz. Is that why you say over? Yeah. 
Okay. And I'm playing him in fantasy. He's going to go off. <laughs> but if he doesn't, then that's good. Oh, might do both of these. Patrick Mahomes, 285 and a half passing yards. Bengals? Yep. Kelsey's back. Mm. Bengals D is solid. They're mm. D-lined. Mm. That's going to be a tough game to to predict. Pat, Patty Mahomes throwing 300. Fuck. I think he could. Can't you see like a 315 game from I, him? I can easily. Give me over. All right. Now his competition, Joe Burrow, 275.5. He just went for f- almost double that. Oh, man. See, I wouldn't even be picking these ones if I was doing an entry. I'd be avoiding this game. Well, the, for NFL this week, we don't right now on Prize Picks. There's only rush yards, pass yards, and receiving yards available. Oh, Burrow, damn. How, what was the number? Two, uh, two seventy five. If they're gonna be down, he's gonna be tossing that thing. Over, fuck it. Do five. Uh, Trevor Lawrence, <laughs> Trevor Lawrence and Mac Jones. Okay, ready? Okay. They're, they're like both that. they're both two hundred and point two hundred point five passing they yards. They both have the same yeah. number. Trevor's under. Love Trevor unders. Love Trevor unders. Mac Jones under as well. All right, let's yeah. finalize this entry. Run, run under every team under. You went over on both Burrow and Mahomes. Yes, I did. Over over. And over on Jonathan Taylor. Yeah, over. Put nine fifty on it. Nine hundred and fifty dollars. No. Oh. Like there's like a, a number there. I'm trying to get to a whole number. So So nine dollars and fifty cents. Do I have fifty nine fifty in there? Yep. Then nine fifty, yeah. All right. You win this, you get all five correct, you win ninety five bucks. I'll take it. Entry has been placed. Bet that. I hope you win. See you guys on Sunday. This will be clipped for your viewing pleasure. Our making, making sure you didn't hoe me. <laughs> All right. We yeah, check it. it. <laughs> our Patreon is also brought to you by... Oh, I'm sorry. Our podcast is also brought to you by our Patreon. Patreon.com slash Dunn and Drew. You get into the esteemed Discord, which you hear much about in the voicemails. Yes, you do. Um, and New that's channel. Patreon. Oh, yeah. There's a weight loss challenge going on. Yeah. Boot camp. I'm trying to lose these at this muffin top. Um, also it's patreon.com slash done and drew facebook.com slash group slash done and drew join our Facebook group um, and buy our merch done and com. if you use the code Christmas you still get free shipping <laughs> I gotta change that we celebrate all year till the end of the year my bad um, college football you guys heard a little bit from Dilla about his not yet. take not yet it's after yet. it's after this scratch that college football we finally get to the relevant bowl games here on new year's eve it's been crazy the bowl season because a lot of teams have backed out due to the covid um their players not, not having enough players because of covid but it's funny that these playoff teams have not had that issue but that's where the money is you feel me someone got to get the title so we have Bama favored by 14 and a half. I think I wrote this in wrong. It's a 13 and a half here, but I think it's 14 and a half spread for Bama Cincy. That's the first one on New Year's Eve. 3 30 p.m. Who do you have? I got Cincy winning that game. Um, they're going to pull the upset. Bama got up big. Da, 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 da. Bama got up emotionally very big, very big versus Georgia. Uh, Cincy, they're going to be sleeping. Saban's going to have them sleeping sound asleep. Saban isn't going to have them sleeping. Bama is winning. I Bam, think yeah. since he covers, if you guys are betting on this. And I pick Georgia to beat Michigan because... They're mad. This is really on New Year's Eve? Hmm, yeah, wow. it is. Busy this day. One, uh, is that Friday or Saturday? That is Friday. Whoa, 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 whoa. This is... So they... On Friday, they have a... Th- Oh, I guess people are off work on New Year's Eve. But that's weird. 3.30 game on a Friday? Yeah. It's very strange. Um, and then right after that, Georgia will beat Michigan. Michigan's quarterback, I just don't think, has the juice. Um, so Georgia will win. 
So we'll have Georgia Cincy in the. Georgia in the, uh, Cincy. What? I'm surprised you're saying that with a straight face. You you don't believe Cincy's winning. Um, I've got. Uh, ooh, damn! Georgia, Michigan, kind of Tev. <laughs> Mm. I am looking forward to that game. Michigan. Georgia will pull out. We're going to get a Bama-Georgia rematch. The experts want it. That's what they're going to get. All right. Hashtag not a Jaguars podcast, but I had to invite one of our friends over from the podcast Bold Take recorded right here in Jacksonville. They are a Jaguars-specific podcast, and... If you're on Twitter uh, or you're, you've seen our retweets, uh, it's something amazing has, has transpired in the last few days. Jaguars Twitter, which is made up of thousands of diehard, funny, passionate group collection of fans. It's all, all a, ages, all ages. It's a, it's a cult right now. Yeah. It, there's a movement going on that we haven't seen since... Um, I, I'd have to dig in the history books to see when, when a movement like this has transpired in America. Yeah. But right now it's, it's inspirational. Every, all the fans have changed their avatars to some version of a clown with a mustache, um, you know, like Shad Khan has the Jaguars owner and it's to protest the retaining. There's been a report from NFL network that Jaguars and Shad Khan are retaining Trent bulky, the toxic, snake of a general manager who's not good at his job um and they're retaining him general manager and he's going to do the coaching search and jaguars fans fear that it will limit our candidates who want the who would want the job otherwise and we just don't think shot Khan um is either cares enough to search for a new general manager or if he just doesn't know that trent balky isn't respected or liked Mm -hmm. in the league um or is good at his job it's maybe a combination of both so we're talking to dilla who is we we get into we get into it in the interview it's he's such a unique fan because he's like you fan of your team but imagine you know everything that's happening in in the front office of your favorite team and you don't you don't write an article you don't work for Sports Illustrated, you don't work for the local paper. You just tweet the news. And all of the fans of that team follow you and go to you first for all of that information. (laughs) Literally first. So that's... And trust you. Yes. So this, he's a very unique fan. I just don't think there's there's any else like it in the league. And uh, the Jaguars, Jaguars Twitter has him. And so going to get to the bottom of of how this all started for him and the clown movement. And even if you're not a Jaguars fan, it's a, it's a interesting, very interesting conversation. So stay tuned for that. Um, Eric, I'll see you on the other side. See you there. Let's talk to Eric. <laughs> the, we've got Dilla E Dilla here. The beat writers hate him, but they also respect him. I think they like me now. Yeah. Like, like well, yeah, Mark Long on the show. I think that. That kind of signifies like the biggest yeah. piece pipe. Branch, olive, whatever yeah. they call it, if I've ever seen in my olive life. Olive branch, yeah. Yeah, welcome to the pod. Yes, Thank welcome you. to the your first time in HQ. Dungeon headquarters, I think. But we collaborated earlier this year before the season, so welcome back. I yeah. appreciate that, yeah. Those, <laughs> we uh, don't talk about that collaboration. I was going to say, those projections, <laughs> they are not good. Y'all yeah. were, a lot of y'all were feeling yourselves with how high you put uh, those numbers, too. Bro, I, I remember saying, "This is—is is this not the best offense we've had on paper ever?" And we're like, kind of in agreement, like, "Yeah." And now it's the worst offense I've ever seen ever. us. Yeah. It's—it's it's like only us. That only happens to us. Yeah, I think I said Trevor Lawrence is going to throw forty-two touchdowns. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> at this rate, he, he, might, ten. <laughs> he might not have forty-two by the time he's been in the league for ten years. So Jesus Christ! I just don't really know. Um, what I was thinking back then, but hey, it was we, fun were all, we were all hype, man. We were all hype. We were drinking fun. that Urban Meyer juice. <laughs> drinking that Urban Meyer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jag season is a mess. Um, and it's clown show now. And we'll get into that. But the reason we have Dilla here, or well, one of the reasons, is because he knows for s- s- some reason, we don't question it, he knows. 
probably more about the in, the ins and outs of what happens um, in the Jaguars organization than even the local beat writers. It's it's crazy because if you're a fan, and I know we have listeners from elsewhere. Um, you get your news from the local beat writers and Adam Schefter, Ian Rappaport, but, and I don't want to call you a casual fan because you're a hardcore fan, but you're like an everyday fan and you have to be, you have to have the most unique situation here. I, there's no way, unless there's other fans that maybe have family members in the, in an organization. Um, but I don't think even if they do, maybe they're not like as hardcore as you. You're a hardcore fan and you know what's actually going on inside the building from sources that you've gathered over how many years? Uh, probably like four and a half years now. Four so. and a half years. Nice. And people on Twitter, they go to you. <laughs> like you will beat Schefter, you'll beat Ian, you'll beat all the local guys and girls to stories. And it's just so unique because you're just an everyday fan. You're not monetizing this stuff. You don't have a blog. You don't have an, uh, you don't write articles. You're just tweeting away. Tweets. <laughs> who's, who's, who's that on your Abbey? You don't even have your face on your Abbey. Nope. Haji beats. So like some people know who he is, but he's probably like a C list rapper at best. Back then he mm-hmm. was on like, um, like he hung out with Tyler and all them. Uh, he's part of Tyler's squad. crew. Yeah, he was, he was one of those guys back in the day. So it was like one day I just typed in like, I think I typed in C-list rappers, and he popped up in that, like, water bottle. I was just kind of like, man, I hear that water's good. And I kind of <laughs> ran with it. And the so the origin behind the, like, Abby was really that when I was listening to rappers, if I was feeling their music, I would run with that Abby until it became, like, all right, I'm, like, sick of changing this. Mm-hmm. So that's when I, like, typed in, like, C-list rappers. Like like I said, the water bottle got me, and it's been there for almost ten years since until like yeah. a couple of days until yesterday. Ago. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like when I so that's like crazy too. I know we're going to get into that, but I one hundred percent woke up that morning and I was like, man, there's no way I'm changing my abby. Mm-hmm. And like me too. Two well, and a half I, hours later, I'm like yeah. changing. Like, <laughs> like no, like I'm like leading the charge, like you know, never before. But man, it's crazy. That that shit's really cool. Like you said, it is solidarity behind it is. It's nice. Yeah, it's. I saw the Avi. I think it started yesterday, right? As I first saw the Avi yesterday, nowhere in that Twitter group chat, I check it here and there, and I saw someone talking about um, changing it to theirs. And the next thing I know, I see everyone doing it, and they added the mustache because the mustache wasn't on there at first, right? So yeah, I, I believe Solly did that like the night before as a joke. Like, mm-hmm. if you like hate Trent Balky or whatever, make this your Abby. And he said like forty people did it, and they did it at like eleven o'clock at night. So like you know, most people were checked out. And then you know we were, were in that chat, like you said, you jump in there and see those messages first thing in the morning. And that's, I was like, no way, like this is not. And then here we are now. They're talking about us on ESPN. Yeah, yeah uh, <laughs> who I saw in the group. Who was it that was talk that mentioned the clown Abby? Yeah, Field Yates. Yeah, so he's Field big Yates. time. He's like yeah. on TV. He's, on the, yeah. he's, big time. he's pretty yeah. big time. Yeah. Um, so I definitely want to get into that. But can you tell? Can you? So I just kind of like lay the framework of like who you are and where, uh, what Jaguar, what you are to Jaguars Twitter. You like the number one go to for source. Um, and how did you get there? And like just kind of like a quick timeline. Yeah. So I guess it really all first started out. Um, like right place, right time. So like the first story in quotes that I broke was Jalen Ramsey traveling back and forth between Jacksonville and LA. And it was like right when he like had the trade rumors pop up and then like confirmed the trade rumors and then his back hurt. And then like he couldn't play because his back hurt. And then I find out, Hey, Jalen Ramsey got on this plane and he's flying to LA. And I was like, what? Like, he's supposed to be hurt. He can't even practice. You know, we all know he's trying to get traded out. And then I get another text, like, a couple of days later. He's coming back, and he's going to fly back out with the team to Denver. So that was the first time I ever got information, and I was like, all right, I'm going to put this out on Twitter. Like, we'll see what happens. And did you ask the person that you got this, this news from, like, hey, can I, can I tweet this stuff that you're telling mm-hmm. me? 100%. So from the very beginning, and I think maybe that's why I've, like, run for so long and get information like even you guys and like literally my closest friends closest friend, you, don't Kat, get, you don't say yeah, shit yeah. they have no idea they have like an idea and sometimes they get like warm but no one has like any actual idea but like the the more people i get the warmer they get which like makes sense too yeah there's only so many people who at certain times know certain information so like if you have any insight on who has information you can kind of start connecting dots too like if you knew it at this time how many people so so you know, has it been 
has the list grown of where you get your information from? Yeah, it's there's like a larger group of people. And what's really cool is when you get this like bigger group of people who have like no information, when it comes to fact checking, you feel a lot like a yeah. lot better about stuff. Yeah. And that's why I would say like lately, like I'm, I don't shoot a hundred percent. Like oh, there's <laughs> yeah. like rumors and stuff and you know what I mean? And stuff I, because I don't do it for, you don't money, have to shoot a hundred percent. Right. Exactly. Right. I don't, right. I, I'm just like shooting the shit. Like this is what I'm hearing. And it happens most of the time. Yeah. Yeah. You could be right. You could be wrong, but right. most of the time you're right. So that's all that matters. And that's like always the thing. Like, I'm not trying to go to ESPN. I'm just like doing me and like some of that shit's cool. And I want you guys to know. Mm-hmm. And like, is it cool that I know first? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but other than that, like at the end of the day, what am I gaining? Twitter followers? What am I losing? Twitter followers? I mean, well, you've done, you've done, you've turned those Twitter followers into a lot of good that you've done for the city. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Like that's a whole nother thing. Like we've done a lot of cool stuff with the platform. You do cool shit with your platform all the time. You're like the coolest like video put together music sound guy ever. So if anyone does anything <laughs> cool, yeah. Andy's behind the scenes, Good just that. so everybody knows, like Andy's always involved. If, if a cool video comes out, music, and unless it's, it. yeah, there's some, there's some, we have some c- good guys in Jack's Twitter. hundred percent. Yeah. Like honestly, these dudes are hustlers and like. Legit, uh, it's cool that we can like hang out and do this because everyone's sure. doing like cool shit and good shit. Which, if you're not using your platform for like good at the end of the day, like what the fuck you got it for? Yeah. So, I don't know. so yeah, you've uh, you've you've gathered more sources, at, and you're very careful not to ha- have more people come to you. You think because you like have kept straight and narrow on not spilling. Yeah, I think that's people. like interesting. Um, we had Mark Long on my podcast, like the Bold Take, last night, and he's an Associated Press, like esteemed writer, been yeah. a writer, journalist yeah, yeah. for 25 years. Um, said he was like covering the Miami Hurricanes, and then now he like does the Gators and the Jaguars. And he said that it's one of the most impressive things. He said it off air was that like it's it's happened for so long that like being able to retain the like people who supply the information, I guess, yeah. is, like, really impressive. And, like, when Caldwell and Marone got fired, everyone was like, hi, you're done. I was about to you're say, done. you've outlasted regimes. Yeah, yeah. and I was like, <laughs> to myself, I was like. Stood the test of time. Yeah, like, are you sure? Like, you guys sure I'm done? Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah you you be playing with your audience. Like, you, I do. you, I, know, you know how to use Twitter. For sure. I'd be you, having fun. Sometimes. Like, we're in that big group chat. Someone yeah. be like, Dilla, like, post a GIF. Like, I'm bored. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so and, I, I, like, work early in the morning. Dude, there's nothing more fun. Tweeting a GIF, going to bed. Have no idea what's yeah. going on. It's like throwing a grenade on the timeline and saying, right. like, peace, y'all have fun yeah. with that. People have come up with the phrase now, cryptic Dilla, because... <laughs> You will drop something on the timeline, like you just said, and people will be like, what the fuck's happening? Right. I don't even know what's happening. And sometimes it really is like a real crumb. Like, uh, some of that shit's cryptic as hell. And yeah. the people who know are like, like, how do you think about that? Mm-hmm. Uh, what's the favorite, either that that you've done, or the favorite, your favorite news that you've known before, before others? Um, what's up, dude? <laughs> <laughs> hey, you came to the right place. <laughs> Uh, What's up, man? Blitz, Blant, Blitz Tannehill is here. Watch the cord. Yeah, watch, watch the cord. I tripped man. over it. Uh, no question. Oh, no question. <laughs> Blitz, <laughs> Blitz Tanny is no, in I the building. It's Blitz from Tannehill episode 200. is here. <laughs> good, man. Doing How are good. you? Doing good. Uh, Go Derek is here. You remember him from episode 200. He came up to our booth and asked us. Would you uh, Blitz Tannehill? Would we Blitz Tannehill? <laughs> uh, he was inebriated. Uh, Blacked. Obviously blacked. Uh, I can't remember our answer. Um, but uh, we, we, whatever we roasted whatever answer the fuck was, out of we him. were wrong. <laughs> uh, the Jaguars were wrong too because they expected they ran us both times. I think yes. we played them twice already. Yeah, it's funny. Yeah, we have. Um, so yeah. Anyway, Derek is here because feel free to take a seat over here, Derek. Yeah, um, seat. We did a AEW. I'll hand you the mic if you want to chime in at any point. <laughs> Not Blitz and Tannehill. <laughs> uh, we did a AEW ticket giveaway because we had an extra ticket for tonight. Yep. Uh, so Derek's coming with us. Yes. Um, Yes. <laughs> it's not in frame, but. Uh, so anyway, I asked you, uh, you can. Put you him in frame. Should you? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Put we'll, him in we'll frame. get you in frame. He's family. He's with a camera that's like 15 pounds. <laughs> so I saw myself on that episode. I not was this like, camera. God, you fat piece of shit. It's, it's tough out here for us. Are you in our Discord channel, uh, the losing weight one? No. Oh, well, then 
Can't I did complain. keto for like a month because of that. And I was like, uh, bro, I shit. did keto for a week and started shitting water and was like, <laughs> no way. <laughs> hey, it sounds yeah. like it's working. Yeah. No way. I did it for like a week, like months ago. It hurt. It hurt. I was like, no yeah. way. This is not cool. I lost like 20 pounds. Wow. I was like, oh, you're standing that's up there. It's a lot. <laughs> I probably gained it all right back though. I was like, dude, fuck this keto shit. Yeah, everyone who does it seems to come right back as soon as I stop. Um, um, okay. The question was, what was your, what was your favorite? Oh, you might want to, cause we need to see when it stops. Scary. What was your favorite um, news that you knew before everyone that you fucked with people on the timeline? And then your favorite uh, story to break. Um, so I think my favorite story to break. Well, it's not really. It's a it's a fun one because it's cryptic. So it was the Tyson Campbell pick. Okay. I told everyone straight up that. So we picked like, Tyson Campbell in the second round first of this past of the, draft. Yeah, it was the first pick of the second round. Yeah. So it was the first so pick of the some, day. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so it was the night before I said the Jaguars, you know, pick is going to be chunky. Because we're talking about Chunky's Campbell's Soup. Ah, uh, okay. So one of the guys that works for ESPN got a prop bet that he would be the first safety drafted, and he got him on a site that listed him as a safety, and he ended up winning like 900 and something thousand dollars. And that dude accidentally favorited that tweet the night before, and I'm favorited it. And I've never told anybody till now, but that oh. sh- isn't that crazy? Hey, thank you. Like, is he well, in, is he in, is Dylan in frame? Hopefully. Yeah, get more of him and less of me. Please. That's cool. I can get closer to Andy. We <laughs> yeah. we, Andy and I have been friends for a long time. Yeah, that, uh, yeah, that, that actually. Yeah, look at this. I got something to lean up against. I can you're chill. okay with my foot, my bare Bro, foot. Bro, you're not there. bothering me at all. Because <laughs> I, I don't wash these. I, dude, you don't. I've, I know you don't wash. You don't pee and flush. You don't do anything. You're, you're nasty. You get closer too. <laughs> all right. Yeah, here we go. All right, we're all in here. But no, I think that's funny and cool and like. Um, yeah, that's so. So what you're saying is he may have seen it, connected the dots, and, and made that bet. Yeah. Wow. So that's the thing, like the Gara follows and the rap sheets, they've all done that shit. They popped up in my mentions on accident and been like, oh, shit, like didn't mean to. So oh, like, I see funny. it. I know that they're doing it yeah, because yeah. they all slipping. Yeah. <laughs> it's true. Accidentally yeah. hitting the, yeah. the heart button on your shit. What would be the biggest one that you've known? Maybe that you didn't tweet right away. Biggest story? Yeah. Man, probably the Urban Meyer one. I texted. The fire or the hire? The fire. Fire. Um, I texted Solly at 6 p.m. Sounds like he's going tomorrow morning. I'm going to bed. <laughs> <laughs> I woke up. He had got look at this a cat. Oh yeah. I woke up and he Frank. had been and he had been fired. He got fired at like one something in the yeah, morning on Thursday. Yeah. yeah. And so that Someone one was cool. Frank. And I, because like man, that was like a really 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 good feeling. Like when Urban Meyer got fired. Like how did that feel? That was good, right? Probably as good yeah. as when he got hired. I was like hot and cold with it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I, for, like obviously I was I was okay with it, but yeah. Like, I just wanted to give him one more year to build his team. That's all I yeah. wanted to do. And then, like after, like off the, the off the field allegations, that was you know, if it, if it didn't have all those off the field stuff that he yeah. did, he'd probably still be here for sure. I think the off the field stuff got him out quicker, but yeah. the shit that he was doing, like working a nine to five and not paying attention and not knowing the players, like that's the shit that pissed me off. Yeah, so like yeah. while it was yeah, yeah, while it was like the dumb shit that like ran him out, like I'm I'm glad he's gone because there was like actual stuff that happened. But um when when I heard that he was gone, that was like such a freeing feeling. Like I said it was early. I was like, man, this is so good. I'm definitely going to sleep early. Yeah, it, it went on like way too long and he did so much bullshit and we weren't winning. The offense looked pitiful. So I wanted it to work so bad. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was over there probably did. week eight. <laughs> I knew, like, this shit ain't happening, yeah. man. I just think it's crazy, like, Trevor, like, just big nuts it and was like, hey, Shad, let me meet you on the yacht. Let's talk about this. And, so, and got that. Like, he's the one who made it happen. Trevor's got the most poise I've ever seen for, like, a rookie QB in these first conferences. He's only thrown one touchdown. Coming to this <laughs> this dumpster fire, and yeah. he's just like, we just got to go out there and play better. It's play crazy. better. Like, he's got, like, such... Uh, containment of his emotions because if it was me out there being quarterback, I'd be like, Man, fuck this damn team, bro. <laughs> this nigga's ass. But I guess he'd just be praying and says, it's it's a prayer, yeah. God, it's God, God get us through. Instance? Yeah, for sure. Okay, so he kind of reminds me of like Shane Falco. Right. You know what I mean? He just takes a bunch of guys. I mean, obviously, it's in the movie, it's a but different outcome, similar. But yeah, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, right. you know, chicks dig scars, glory lasts forever kind of guy. Yep. How many you know? touchdowns did he throw? Uh, more than seven know. or eight or wherever <laughs> we're at nine. More than Trevor right now, yeah. obviously. But Tough scene. So, all right. So let's talk about the the clown emojis that have. Do you have a clown emoji? Oh yeah, yeah. absolutely. Oh yeah. Sure. So I got clowns. <laughs> every Jaguars fan has a clown in their avatar right now. It, some version or another. The most popular is the standard clown emoji with the shot con mustache attached, Handlebar. which does not have racial undertones, yeah, which some have suggested. <laughs> on ESPN Radio. 
That's what? Uh, oh, the whole the whole clown emoji thing. Yeah, we're, we're just talking about that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Field Yates was talking about that. It was nuts. It's fire. Dude. So it started from our friend Solly. Solly started it. He told everyone to to make their avatar clown 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 emoji. <laughs> Shot Khan's mustache because we're calling Shot Khan a clown because how can you retain a general manager? It just it's either I think you said on your podcast today it's either he's or maybe Cap did clueless. And he has no idea what he's doing, or he's lazy. And Mark Long said it's a little bit of both, he thinks. And it has to be. It's either either or or both. Um, yeah, because like you said earlier before they got here, he could easily pick up a phone, call some people, and ask for Trent's you know, history in the league, and he won't get, everyone he won't get one co-sign guy. for this guy. I talked to an agent today, literally like an hour and a half ago. Oh, this is good stuff. And we, <laughs> we actually spoke about that. I said, you're an agent. Tell me the truth. Trent Balky. Terrible. That's what he said. The first, he said terrible. And it's a it's it's a pretty like decent profile agent. Like uh, he reps some good players. And and when they're talking about the guy who we're being sold as who's supposed to like lead us into the future with this, you know, franchise quarterback, mm-hmm. super hot shot prospect. Like, no, it's bullshit, man. If we're gonna suck, give me someone new. Yeah. Like, let me suck with someone new. And we really ha- – Shaw's never really done a full reset on, on an organization. Hasn't. Like, it, does he just not want to go GM searching? I don't know. He's the most hands-off owner in the league. Yeah. Which – how. You know what I mean? I think he just is completely clueless. I think that's got does, a lot to do with it. does not know how to search for it. I don't think he even knows what he wants. I mean, right. obviously he knows he wants to win, but he doesn't know how to look for it. And that that's no, and that's sure. why I have a Tony save the Jaguars sign. <laughs> Here's the thing. I gave Tony so much shit over the years because I thought, you know, after the whole Yannick allegation yeah, stuff, yeah, when, yeah. Him and, when him and Yannick were going on on Twitter, mm-hmm. so I thought he had some power. I thought he was some sort of, you know. Uh, he was so I started, getting, I started giving Tony shit. I'm like, dude, fix this shit. Like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> yeah, a lot of people. Come on, man. And then, like, after reading some of the tweets between uh, Dilla and Cap, yeah. and now it's coming out that, you know, it's just him, he's just doing A&W in Fulham, and he's just not yeah. really, you know, messing with the Jags. I'm like, dude. Ask Dad for the keys. Yeah, let's go. You know what I mean? Yeah, come on, yeah. man. Like, please. I've please, said, yeah, I've Jesus. said for a long time. Like, there's no reason that Shad Khan should like when it happens, like pass away and then Tony becomes the owner. Mm-hmm. Shad Khan should get to enjoy being the rich old man who bought the Jaguars, yeah, who gave right. it to his son, yeah, right. and now he gets to enjoy his son being successful mm-hmm. at something that he's leaving him. It yep. doesn't need to be like a, you know, he does it way too long and we're not successful for another 15 years. We don't need to do that. P- pass it over to the dude who, where he's at now, he's succeeding. AEW's competing with WWE. Yeah. He comes off as the owner that ju- is just happy to be a minority owning an NFL franchise in the United States because there's not too many of them. We know who owns these NFL teams. So one. I think he's just proud to own one in- at all. And he's like hands off, like everyone's saying. And I think this clown movement will stir up something never seen a movement on social media like i've never seen a fan base where they could actually alter what the franchise does like this and do you think this is crazy i've never seen anything like it dilla do you think what's the latest i saw your tweet what's the latest on it how much power does this movement have <laughs> so this is what i'll say the movement is 100 percent been recognized by the higher ups yes everyone's seen it yeah how can you everyone not? has said this like it's in the business side has seen it they, they're on Twitter. They see what's going on. They they, they, there's no way you can't see exactly. <laughs> they, it. Exactly. It they're talking about That's every reply radio. is a clown emoji right. or the picture. I mean, they shut the comments off on their live feed. Yeah, dude. They, they did? I, yeah, yes. at the end of the bevel. Dude, I was yeah. in there just clown emoji saying, clown emoji yeah, saying, clown emoji. I just, I just kept going off. and going and going. I was yeah. at work all day and I sat at a desk. I have nothing better to do. <laughs> so, like, my, the past two days, i just been on Twitter just refresh, refresh, just what else am I going to do? You know what I mean? And then right. like, it just started catching, it just started catching track and I'm like, holy crap, and, like, we're actually doing something here. Yeah. Or at least it feels like it. You know what I mean? What else are we going to do? We well, suck right now. Bro, you know how how big our dicks are going to be if oh it God. actually <laughs> if it actually works? God, yes. Yeah, so that's kind of the thing I was going to say. The, the narrative is changing. That, like, they're noticing it. They're feeling the pressure. A lot of, like, you, like, I said the other, you know, I don't. So they're feeling the pressure, right? And and because they're feeling the pressure, when or if something happens, it's going to look a lot like, damn, we did that thing. And we mm-hmm. did do a lot. It is it is embarrassing 
to the owner of the football team that his complete fan base is against him right now. They're calling him a clown. Billionaires don't like to be called clowns. He doesn't like that. You have your whole mustache on a clown emoji <laughs> yes, <laughs> for they, every fan right. on Twitter. So, so, Chuck, so he doesn't like that, right? But what's also happening is he's he's picked up the phone. He's making calls Has around the league. Has he finally picked up the phone? Stuff is happening behind the scenes like in that terms, in the business terms, in the, you know, what he offers you as a general manager, mm-hmm. what he offers you as someone who's, like, building your program. And that they're not glowing reviews. And it's not a it's surprise. Just, he he it's wasn't so easy to do. Just God damn. Yeah, he wasn't someone who was successful as a person in San Francisco. He was successful with the guy who was the general manager before him. Mm-hmm. The team rolled over. They were good, good. Terrible, terrible, terrible. He left. They were like fourth place, third place, first place. It's him. And that, so there's like a, they do a score for like draft classes. And in a comparable amount of draft picks. Dave Caldwell, the old general manager of the team, like graded out at like 797 points on the scale. Mm. And Trent Baalke was like 563. Mm. So he's almost over 200 points worse as a general manager. Than the one that like, Scott has. Than the one that we got Caldwell. rid of. It's like night and day with Caldwell right Yeah, now. and Caldwell wasn't impressive. Caldwell hit on players. Yeah, but, he did hit on he did hit on players. But in, as a whole, he missed where you yeah. can't miss. He missed a defensive end. Exactly. And he missed a quarterback. And when you invest in those two positions and – when your other like earlier round picks are like Cam Robinson, like Cam Robinson's not what we drafted him to be. He's he's serviceable and he's been fine yeah. and this is his best year as a Jaguar. But everyone thought he was going to be the hot shot blue chip prospect, out of Alabama five star, like, and because that's how he played in college. It's just Shad Khan has got a twenty six percent win percentage. I see going around and shit. Yep. We made the playoffs in twenty seventeen, two thousand seven. It's decade intervals. We don't have time to fucking retain guys. We need to keep changing this. So Trevor Lawrence, the number one prospect who is supposed to be yeah. this fucking Peyton Manning SQB, right. he needs the right people around him. So it's it, just it's crazy to me when something doesn't work for so long. What do you do? You change your staff. If you have a restaurant and your restaurant has success, and whoever's running your restaurant decides, "Hey, I'm going to go run my own restaurant," and you got to replace them. Now all of a sudden, everything's falling off the cliff. What are you going to do? You're just going to keep that guy around forever? Are you going to move on and, and try something different? Yeah, and now more than ever, we need the turnover to be high because Trevor Lawrence is not yeah, going to – Yeah, you have to cash in on his rookie contract. Yes, you have to. I mean, turnover normally isn't good for a, for a quarterback that's young, but if you don't have it right, let's turn it over until we do. Yeah. For sure, and another thing about him is in the offense, they're in the offense is so bad, who cares that it's turning over? Yeah, it's awful. It's, yeah, it's not like he's like – in sync and in rhythm and grooving in an offense right mm. now that they're running like, Be- like the below rock below plays. rock bottom right yeah. now yeah. that treadmill drop yeah. last week was like that was just the 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 whole entire picture right there you know what For i mean sure between that and the, the marvin snap. jones where he got hit and dropped it that, you, you know what those I mean? two plays he his stat line he's you know now all of a sudden like a 70 percent passer he's thrown for 350 yards and he's got a touchdown for sure and we quit we quit looking at the cbs graphic <laughs> <laughs> they always like he he's kind of an interesting looking dude sometimes he's like looks pretty good and so, uh, you really like him and i really like him but you Who, know trevor yeah yeah, yeah yeah but you know how he's he has, cute like, he, yeah for sure but <laughs> but he has like two different like looks i feel like he has this like alien like quarterback uh-huh. look and then he has this like yeah he's married got this like fluffy poodle dog like yeah, you know what i mean yeah. so he's got like i don't know personas or whatever and i'm sure you like that like i don't know saying, which one i think is cuter that's what i'm saying like i said you like what you like <laughs> but i'm happy for you hey he it's thank you good with bad teams for against sure. bad teams he looks good at least you know what i mean it, it would be alarming if he still played like crap against a horrible jets defense yeah he you he, know what i mean so it's up. there he just we just got to get some more pieces, man. And 100%. what free agent's going to want to sign here right now? Oh, uh, right That's, now, I don't know. If you get bulky out of here, we're we're we got big big even money. Still, we get a new GM in here. He's going to if I'm if I'm Devonte Adams, I'm I'm just like, yeah, Devonte Adams going to get tagged or he ain't going nowhere. But you know yeah. what? I, I'm just saying that kind of caliber player. Yeah, no, like I think Godwin's your best best like chance to get a good player, but now he's hurt. Why so we get, we always get stuck with the guys that get yeah, hurt too. Yeah. Yeah. It might improve our chances of getting him yeah. since he's hurt. Yeah. Uh, but it is a PR nightmare pretty much locally. Now, once people like feel the eight starts and the story gets national attention, then it becomes a bigger PR <laughs> issue. But right now I don't, I, uh, people get fired from PR, PR issue. Like they either get fired because of performance or PR. Yeah. And this is becoming a PR thing. 
So, I mean, typically <laughs> in these situations, people get fired. So we can uh, only hope. And I don't like rooting for people getting getting fired, but from everything I've heard, this isn't, like, the best person. Bro, this is entertainment business. Entertain then me or cares? fucking lose your yeah. job. Yeah, he has yeah. money. Like, <laughs> I, 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 I never feel sorry for no millionaires losing their jobs. And, like, be at right. the end of the day, I'm, I'm the paying customer. Yeah. yeah, I don't just watch yeah, it on true. TV. I go to every game. I go to away games. I pay. The, and these NFL teams would be nothing without their fans. Yeah. So and like yeah, they make they have crazy TV money. But if no one gives a fuck, why it's not yeah. on TV? It's bad luck when this when the stadium's empty. Yeah, but yeah, if yeah, at the end of the day, I mean? if no one cares and no one wants to watch, the TV deals aren't there. Right. You jinxed yeah. twice today. We got TIA Bank Field. Yeah. Like, what is TIA? Have you seen a TIA Bank? It's like a local just downtown bank in Jacksonville. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. TIA it's like Spank. A shell account, you know, or shell, an offshore account for like. <laughs> yeah. Money. You know what it's I like mean? It's like Bavada. Gambling. Almost like the tongue's so horrible. Yeah. One day we'll get that big sponsor. It'll be the house that Trevor built. Yeah. One day. Look at Altel. Altel. What's the What's the funniest thing you've heard people either in the building say about you or beat writers? <laughs> um. So like the craziest thing I ever did in terms of like firing them up downtown was uh, I tweeted out a picture of like their free agency wish list and it was like in their like email font and everything. Like oh my god! They knew it was like straight up from them, and um, that one like <laughs> alarm bells. And like sometimes I would like when I would say stuff about other things, I would like you know through the grapevine hear it back and laugh about it. I got a phone call from PR like threatening me in the sense of like you know like you could lose someone their job, like their livelihood could be lost over this. And like, we're going to scrub all the phones. Like we're going to look through emails. And I was just like, go for it. Yeah. Like <laughs> go for it. Wow. Like do it. Yeah. Like, I mean, uh, so like I thought that was funny. Another thing I thought was funny was I tweeted out a picture of Justin Jefferson when I heard he was high on their board. Mm-hmm. They passed on Je- uh, Jefferson for yeah. Chase Caleb on chase on who is terrible. Yeah. Jefferson's very Sack good. Guru, huh? And when I when I tweeted out the picture Sack of it, guru. they were they were very upset at me because they had already made graphics and they thought that I was like leaking more mm. information out. I already made graphics. Yeah, so like they just kinda yeah, well so they make graphics yeah. for like a big chunk of players, especially I wish with they multiple got to use picks. Them. Yeah, but um it's stuff like that that I think's funny that I hear, you know. Um oh are we Okay. All right. Uh Bama fan. Fortunately. Need your re fucking lax. Oh, wait, you say fortunately or unfortunately? Fortunately. Oh, I was about to say. I thought you said unfortunately. You said fortunately. I was like, what the fuck? No, unfortunately. No, uh, prediction versus Cincy. Do they have a chance? Because we Does had Cincy a, have a chance? We yeah. had a caller come yeah. and say, he's a Bama fan. He yeah. was like, I don't know why everyone's only talking about Georgia and Michigan because Cincy's actually an admirable opponent. Hey, I'm in the same boat. Yeah. Yeah. So check this Cincy has really good corners, right? How do you beat Alabama's good receivers? You have to have good corners. So that's important. And what do you need on offense to beat Alabama? Alabama plays man coverage. They come up and press you. I've played a little bit more off this year, but it's man coverage. And if you have a quarterback who can throw a deep ball, you can beat him. Mm-hmm. Ritter's good. Ritter. I mean, Now, this, it, my question is my bad. You got well, I would say is in this year, I think anyone can beat anyone, especially if you got the top four teams together. For sure. My only real question is in the trenches, what do they offer? Because if Kentucky. Ritter has no time, me either. I, I'm not going to sit here and act like I've watched Kentucky. Or excuse Cincy, me. Yeah. Yeah, oh, difference. you're disrespecting the fuck <laughs> out of him already. <laughs> Kentucky. Why are you same urban? Difference. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, yeah, Phoenix Cardinals. <laughs> Phoenix Cardinals. God, I hated that. That was so cringe. <laughs> he never fixed it. He never, never fixed it. Never. Dude, Stuff I stopped by his guns, and I'm just said like, it eight dude, times. You, or you know what? Trent Bocky was probably saying Phoenix Cardinals to him over and over and over. No, so like I don't know. I mean, I think that they. They have some players outside. Like, I think they're running backs to transfer from Alabama. I think they have a cornerback that's a transfer from Alabama. So, they got good players on their team. Um, I think it'll be a good game. Alabama win by, like, 13. Hey, that's the, hey, spread. That's the spread. It's like 14 it's the over half. under. Or not the yeah, 14 the and a half? Yeah. Take the under. You heard it here first. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Any other jack shit? Um, <laughs> yeah. Check your turn phone. Bar- turn ball Does he stay or go? Does he stay or does he go? Is he going to go? That uh, Brett Martineau said that he thinks that he's definitely not going to be the GM. It's possible. He's does, for he sure. just doesn't see it. He's he's sticking to that. Like yeah, this shit's crazy. Like my shit just. Blew, bro. That's, That's great. Really I'm responding sense. to his sentence. I think like, the Bengals put out the best blueprint of what to do once you get your franchise quarterback. Yeah, just because they only won like what, like three or four games. Yeah, 
when they got when they yeah. drafted Burrow, and then the they were Owen, they were zero six before they even right. drafted him. Yeah, and then they went and got their their number one. Right, but man, like if there's ever a blueprint to what the Jags need to do, they need to look at Cincy and be like, yeah, I just don't think this year base. there's a receiver who's gonna give you what yeah, Jamar Chase. Chase exactly what Chase is giving. Bro, they got and, Chase Higgins and Boyd, and when yeah. they drafted. Chase, I didn't think he was going to be that good. Remember, you said he couldn't see the ball. Yeah, and you know, and then it's like, well, so the thing about <laughs> yeah, the thing about him, why I didn't really like him Played is us. he he <laughs> wins, he wins with separation, like at the point of attack, like he gets past the corner and then beats the corner in the air. The only other like successful receiver in the league who only really won like that was Des Bryant. So you have all these big body receivers who only you know they win at the at the point of attack. Like, that's the only way they win. Some, you know, other receivers can win like that, but they are also disgusting, can run you deep over the top. Um, but that's the, like, that's the majority of the way he wins. Think about all of his sick plays that he makes. They're all, like, yeah. close to contested catches. The DB goes flying, and he fucking takes off. Yeah. Because he wins in close contact. And I didn't think anyone was ever going to do it again. Like Des Bryant, when you get drafted that high in preseason, he's dropping the ball literally every time it's thrown to him. No, <laughs> like what? What makes you think that he's going to be a good player? And then boom, they start playing games that count. Yeah. So and he's like Jerry Rice, Joe <laughs> Rice. <laughs> Randy Moss. You know what I mean? So it's like I don't know. And he also, also has Higgins, Boyd. Like yeah, and he's yeah. got people spread it out. And that's Mixing. the other thing too. Like one of the best running backs. I think that's another here. fun thing about just being a fan who knows shit. Like. If my, like, takes are bad, who gives a fuck there either? Mm-hmm. No one's going back to look at that. Yeah. I'm, I'm just a fan, We dude. know that. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, shit. Who do you want for Jags head coach? This um, is all said and done heading into next season. I'm high on the Jim Caldwell train. That's my guy, I guess, if I had to pick so one. Guy. Um, I don't want Peterson at all. I think if they hire Peterson, you're guaranteed to get Trent Balky. Mm-hmm. Heard it here first, maybe. I don't know what people have been tweeting. I've been hanging out with y'all for like an hour. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> you, want, you want a guy that's that's a head coach before, right? Absolutely. You don't, you don't, want, you don't okay. want another quarter. Or player. head coach before or like in the NFL? Head coach for me. So head coach. Okay. So like if it came down to it and you picked a guy who was going to be a first-time head coach who's offensive coordinator, it's going to be between Hackett, Byron Leftwich, and Kellen Moore, right? So of those three, who do you want? Uh, s- sorry again. Uh, Byron Leftwich more. I might take Kellen. I, I honestly, I would. You could flip a coin for me. It'd be a three sided coin, but you could yeah. flip a coin for me, and I'd, uh, okay. I'd be, a, I'd probably feel the same about all of them, except Hackett, only because he's been here. Yeah, and I, I hate the recycling thing. Would be yeah. kind of like, oh, okay, that's kind of boring. <laughs> yeah, it would feel like another half measure to bring someone back who's been here before. Yeah, that's yeah. completely different. I think I Byron would be best for the culture, though. Yeah, yeah. pick out of all three of them, I think Byron would be best for the culture. I think that'd be cool too. Sure. My thing with. Byron is who he's worked with, Arians and Tom Brady. Arians has been very successful everywhere he's at, Tom Brady, Tom Brady. Now, Byron Leftwich had success with Jameis Winston, if you don't look at the interceptions. Now, obviously, the interceptions aren't Byron Leftwich's fault. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, that, at the end of the day, that's not. But Brady that, that was it. Yeah, that was a problem that Byron Leftwich, or that Jameis Winston had, that Byron Leftwich couldn't coach out of him. Is it like a complete like red flag? No, just something to think about. Um, I think Kellen Moore is interesting because Dak Prescott was hurt and their offense still moved. Yeah. Um, Dak Prescott comes back, looks like Dak Prescott. Their yeah, offense yeah. is sick. Um, it's kind of interesting too because they say Trevor Lawrence like likes the Linehan offense, and from what I've understood and been told, uh, the Kellen Moore offense is Linehan's offense with more vertical passing yeah. incorporated into it. Well, Trevor should be. Attacking defenses with vertical passing. Oh, yeah. Hell Jaguars yeah. don't have the players for it now, but that should be we the goal. We haven't seen that shit all right here. Cowboys got CD Lamb and in, in Amari C. Cooper. Yeah. <laughs> Amari Cooper, thank you. I yeah. think Gallup. Uh, and, Gallup and, too. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, they got three people who can run, three people who can catch. Crazy. And yeah. then you got like Amari Cooper is one of the best receivers in the league. Mm-hmm. I mean, obviously, we don't it's have not that. Like, it's why not. Why can't we have at least one of those guys? Yeah. You know, they got trios and we can't get us. A, a sure. We guy. got literally table and Austin out targeting everyone. <laughs> mm. 2021. We got, we got Walker, Walker little out there running routes. Yeah. Out loud. Jesus you Christ. were getting stats with table and Austin playing college football on Xbox. You were playing with him in the fucking video games in a game that doesn't West even Virginia, exist. Baby. Yeah. Gino to, and he's, he's Gino getting, he's out targeting yeah. people into, in 2021. It's on your favorite football team. It's not yeah, okay. It sucks. Yeah. Well, Dilla, we're all going to sit here and wait for the news to come out, but thank you for your insight. No problem. Thanks for having Hopefully me. Hopefully something happens while we're hanging out with you tonight. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be cool. <laughs>
Let us know first before you tweet it. <laughs> I got you. No, you won't. I won't. <laughs> yeah. I'll definitely, yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll tweet it and tell you, like, it'll be like, boom, boom. <laughs> but, it, but it won't, yeah. Quiet on his phone, dude. Yeah, yeah. Just start, like, peeking over. It like, won't be bam, boom. It'll definitely be boom, boom. <laughs> you know what I mean? So. I'm going to turn on tweet notice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, people have that, and you guys are fucking sick. That's yeah. so weird. Don't yeah, do that. Don't do it. Because yeah, fucking sick. retweets come up, all Everything. this shit. Dude, I, I'll be like. Sorry, I don't have as many followers as you guys, so I don't know that line. <laughs> no, no, no. People no, who don't. Saying. Have, people like, setting other people's yeah so like when i tweet on. it makes their phone oh, ding oh, oh, yeah, really? yeah that's yeah, crazy yeah. i'll be like Retweets damn too. that that like grass looks crazy i, I tweet stupid shit yeah. too. like i don't only tweet like nfl content yeah football, it's like some random yeah, thought i, I yeah i'd be like their man it's fucking cold outside like, <laughs> it's just like why do you want to see that like you know what i mean like yeah, yeah. it's taking the po- the negatives with the positive you know that maybe they'll see you know one of your good ones yeah <laughs> before everyone else definitely yeah. a volume shooter i'm like kobe Bryant. <laughs> Johnny Sins. It's like one yeah. of your war zone, um, one of your war zone, uh, uh, where you shot the dude out of the helicopter. Yeah, no scope, no dude, nothing. Dude, it was like, it was wild. And I yeah, suck at war zone. I, in. I had installed it. I was like, dude, I played it yeah. like five I minutes. It. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I played it for five minutes. I got like sniped from like two miles away. And I was like, right. yeah, I'm done. But it's crazy. Like, you think I'm good. I'm terrible. All off that one clip. It's crazy, right? Well, and you talk about playing I, I it a lot, so happen. I think I play you're good. It a lot, but I like, think you're good because you say you play it a lot. Yeah, I mean, I can like, I can, yeah, yeah. I mean, how many times do you play a day? Oh, maybe like <laughs> twice a week. <laughs> no, I like have a job and I'm, you know, I, I like contribute to society. Like I right play all the time. You have a job and a half pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. Nah. If that was a job, I would stop doing it because I don't get paid for it. That shit would suck. Yeah. That's well, why it's fun. Well, thank you for your I service then. The no problem. Over, We're just like hanging out. Yeah. You're getting paid to play the same game. Like that would kill me. Yeah. Like, dude, I'm so tired of playing the same game over and over. But yeah, like you play with different people so and like. money doing that. Yeah. Esports is crazy. It is. I, yeah, I don't really have any opinions on it, but I agree. It's crazy. I'm just saying it's crazy. Like how much? <laughs> no, like, I agree. Like I, though. dude, there's like putting it in the Olympics like, and stuff. It's like, yeah, it's crazy. Actually, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> no, I agree. No, 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 no. Esports is nuts. Like I, I completely agree. And like I'll be watching ESPN, and all of a sudden there's like drone racing on. Like that shit's crazy too. Yeah, like they're throwing anything on TV. Yeah, now. You can bet on it. <laughs> yeah, the Ocho, the Ocho. It's real. Like, what? Dodgeball. Yeah. All right, everybody. We're going to drink some beer and go to AEW and watch some wrestling. Yeah, Yeah, hopefully make a scene. Shit. Finish this pot up after we return. Try to get bulky fired tonight. Thank you, Dilla. Thanks for hanging. Appreciate you. I was going to do Thank you, Derek. Group shake. For your contribution. (laughs) Hey, thanks. See you, man. That was fun. I'm I'm glad you came in. Blitz Tanny. Blitz Tanny. All right, Dilla. Uh, he's at E underscore Dilla, D-I-L-L-A on Twitter if you want to check him out. Great insight there with uh, what he thinks about Trent Balky. I, for one, think he'll be gone in the next two weeks, and we can all remove the clown shit from our avies and go back to our normal lives. I think we will win this one as a collective group. Uh, and more NFL stuff. Like I said earlier, Broncos are finally below 500. Don't know why I wrote that in there. I was really excited about <laughs> you, that. You were so hyped that they got below that shit. Uh, let me list some coach of the year candidates for you. Tell me what you think. Mike Vrabel. Nope. To have the Titans at 11 and five or 10 and five, whatever they are right now without Henry. Yeah. They're second seed right now. It's and without like without Henry, they've no Julio, Julio Brown most of the season. Crazy. Yeah, he's he's top of the list for me. Uh, Frank Wright, Colts. They started they started slow. Remember we were going through the schedule. They're like, oh, they're not doing it. Oh yeah, Cause, well their schedule fit how they started the season. They started pretty yeah. bad and they turned it around because their schedule got a little weak. But Wentz has stayed healthy for the most part, and they've got Jonathan Taylor, best running back in the league right now. Uh, Bill, yeah, Bill Belichick with that rookie quarterback, Mac Jones. They they have had some very impressive wins. Yes. He could be. He is the best coach in the league. Um, Not coach of the year this year, though. John Harbaugh. The Ravens might miss the playoffs, but oh my God, has it been impressive? The games that they have been in, the games that they have won, with l- half of the roster, maybe more out. Uh, I have Andy Reid turning yeah. them around and winning eight straight. Like their defense looks in s- night and day. People had them literally like. People were saying, "Are the Chiefs done?" Yeah, they were saying that like, like but they found Mahomes out. Like he's not the same man. Miss those days, not really. Brian <laughs> Flores of the Dolphins. That's a good one. Like, uh, come on, one in seven. 
and you win seven straight yeah. and you're eight and seven now, how does that happen? And I don't care if you look at their schedule and you see, like, the complete change in their opponents. It's still impressive to win seven straight and be fighting for a wild card spot. Like, one of the last three teams in the AFC to fight for a wild card spot after starting one and seven. Imagine we start one and seven. We have, we'll never think that we're ever going to fucking have a chance to go to playoffs. But here the Dolphins are. Two games left. One of them being against the Patriots. Imagine. Imagine Patriots coming to Miami and fucking Dolphins fucking win that shit. That would be insane. But we know their history down in South Florida, so I want to put it past them to lose that. Like that uh, Hail Mary play where Gronk was safety. Um, Week 16 has just ended. So you know what that means? Yeah, but do we do power rankings now or do we do them on the last week? That's not for another you know, couple weeks. I feel like it's better now because after the season's over, we're going to have fucking playoff teams. Power rankings matter. Mm. There. Mm. Good point. We still have like several teams fighting for playoff spots here. So mm. this might be the last like decent week to power rank teams. Because it's been such a, a drastic change from our last one. But I don't want to look because that's cheating and, you know, off the dome. Feel me? All right, I'm ready. So, 10. Top 10 teams off the dome right now. Go. You got 10? Mm-hmm. Oh, yes, I got 10. Number 10, Cardinals. What are you looking at? I'm ready for getting ready for our picks. Oh, you're looking at team, team names. Shut up. <laughs> Damn, you really hate the Cardinals, man. Um... Nine, give they shouldn't me, be on this list at all. Nine, give me the <sighs> Titans. I don't, I don't think they're second seed on paper. Interesting. Give me eight, the seed. eight, give me the. Mm, Come on, Bengals. Ooh, I want to put Rams at seven. Okay. Bengals. We're gonna miss somebody again. Six Bills. No, no. Oh. Mm. You had to put Bucks there. Mm. They're falling off right now. So five, give me the Bucks. Four. Mm. Cowboys. Okay. We're Cowboys. I'm trying to think who's. Ooh, redo. redo. Colts. Colts. Oh, yeah. So we'll go three Cowboys. Two Chiefs. And one Packers. That was fucking solid. Yeah, it was. That was good. That was the best list ever. That was Gross. very good. Who did we miss? I dare you. I dare you. I'm not even going to answer because we missed nobody. All right. Game picks. <laughs> I am two games ahead. Yeah. This is your last two, two weeks, weeks, two weeks, two weeks to come back. So be bold. I got fucked this week because 49ers should have won that game against the Titans. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Seahawks, how you lose to the Bears? That was my lock, Seahawks. How you Yikes, how do you have it? Seahawks as a lock. They were up all game, and Justin Fields came back. I don't even know who started for the Bears, but they came back and won. But fuck, I got fucked this past week. We should be tied, mm. but here I am trailing this man by two again, and I got to make a push. I got to make a push. Oh, shit, we're not recording. Just kidding. <laughs> I saw red and looked right back at my phone. <laughs> lock of the week for week 17. Bills against the Falcons. Easy. I'm gonna catch you there. Oh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna pick a I'm gonna pick I'm gonna pick a lock. Packers over Vi what'd you pick? Because I picked Packers over Vikings. Well, I think you did that before and Vikings beat them. <laughs> Wait. Yeah. Man said, Wait. Man said I'm going back for more. Wait. Changing it? Can I do Patriots over Jags, or is that boring? 
Packers, yeah, because I don't know if I did Packers before, but fuck it. Packers over Vikings. Yes, don't pick against the damn Jags. Too easy. Um, upset special. I'm. Why do they always f- feed the NFC North teams to the Packers on primetime? Poor Vikings got to face Aaron Rodgers a Sunday night football. Yeah, they beat him once, though, so don't feel sorry for him. Upset. They, yeah, they beat Upset. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I've got Dolphins beating the Tennessee Titans to back that power ranking that I just had. Titans are favored by three and a half. Dolphins know what they need to do to make this playoff push, and I think Flores makes that push for Andy's coach of the year. Give me Dolphins. Give me Ravens to beat the Rams. Lamar's back, right? Couldn't tell you, but L.A. You got to travel all the way to Baltimore. Hostile environment. 1 p.m. game. Let's go. <laughs> uh, game of the week. There's a couple. Yeah, two of them to be exact. That's what couple is. I got <laughs> Chiefs Bengals, and I want to take the Bengals so bad for selfish fantasy reasons. Chiefs aren't going to lose until the Super Bowl. Wow, and they might not even. To the Rams, to your Rams. I don't think they're they're, no, they're going to beat the Rams. Um, I got Chiefs Bengals, and I think the Chiefs decisively win that game. Probably like I say, thirty-one seventeen. Give me Cowboys to beat the Cardinals in Dallas, or wherever the fuck they play. Um, Cowboys are favored by five and a half. Um, I need Cardinals to come out here. This is this is going to be your season defining game. Even though you have no Hopkins, so that completely changes how your offense looks. But you guys have been on like, um, you've been on a slide, as our friend that called in has said. But you're you're playing a top defense in the league with the Cowboys, a powerhouse offense. You gotta you gotta you gotta show up, Cardinals. You gotta show up. You gotta have an amazing offensive performance, and Kyler Murray has to be accurate with the ball. He's being a pussy out here. And <laughs> my fantasy championship. Now you're crying. Depends on it. I need this six hundred. I need this six hundred. So Kyler the creator, it's on you, my boy. It's on you. Go Cardinals. That's our show, guys. If I sound stuffy in the second half of the episode, it's because his allergies fucking smack. Oh, me. how did we? Did we enjoy <laughs> AEW? Do you I was want to talk tr- about I that. I was trying to enjoy it, but it was rough. The seats were rough. This, yeah, we got our seats. I had no idea. Like two, I was at two o five on the seat. We were in the last row, so we're like in the back, not even on the elevated section. We're like in the. Um, I don't even know what you or we're not in the orchestra seating. We're like behind the orchestra seating on the first level, all the way to the back. So kind of the furthest view possible. No one was gonna see our signs. No one could see the signs. Um the matches were meh. Um so I, I saw CM Punk in person for the first time ever. Yeah, Andy did get to see CM Punk. I got to see Adam Cole uh, Baby. Cole Baby. And at one point, there were a lot of open seats, so he went down to go take some by this cameraman. And this Karen wanted us Super to show Karen. One she of had us pink to, hair. She had, like, some fuchsia-colored hair, Good had, word. like, three kids with her. And we sit down in front of her, three of us, uh, our friend Derek, who you saw on the pod, and she asked for us to show her our tickets. And Just a random fa- just a fan. She's just a random, so random Do you lady. sit here? Said, are these your seats? So we, I had to move my son three times because people weren't sitting in our seats, and I didn't say a word to this lady. I didn't even turn around and look at her. Andy and Derek handled talking to her briefly, but she eventually called over the the safe lady, and we didn't even look over there. So I guess that meant that we didn't give a fuck, and she just let it slide. So we were. She sick. said, "She said, are you are you boys going to do the right thing, or are no, you going to stay here? Are you going to do the right thing?" The Karen said. Yeah, and she told the safe lady, too. She was like, you you could do the right thing. She said it to her, too. She said, you can do the right thing. If you want, you can do the right thing. What, kicking us out of our seat to some... We weren't even bought. We were just sitting seat. down. Yeah. It was a power, power trip. 
Yeah. So we were chilling, sitting there, and then Derek's drunk ass was like bragging about how. Well, not bragging, but like we were talking shit about the mom, and her fucking son was there while her mom went to like the bathroom or whatever, and this little fucking kid snitched again because. <laughs> I guess he got pissed about our, our winning our battle. So he's like, "No, nah, I want to win." So he went back to the staff lady and like, said, "Yo, get these motherfuckers out of here." This poor brainwashed kid. He's is a guy. He's getting brainwashed. He's she's successfully molding him into a Karen, Mister Karen. Yeah. If as if poor kid. Hopefully he gets kept out of schools where he'll be bullied and jumped because. I don't fuck with no tattletales. Haven't fucked with tattletales my whole life. Stitches get stitches. I would have stitched him up, boy, yeah, but he was young. I almost swung. He was young, so but no. wish I said to him, something to him. I didn't have the balls. But yeah, we ended up twelve year old. <laughs> we ended up just going, you know, six rows back from that fucking row and watching the rest. But um, it was like there was like a chill all throughout that amphitheater, and it was fucking me up, which is why I'm sniffing and. Sneezing and shit and congested. I need Flonase ASAP. But overall, it was a very long show. They did Dynamite and Rampage. It went from 8 to like 11. We got home at midnight. It's 12.30 a.m. right now. And I can't breathe. I can't fucking breathe out my nose. (laughs) And my eyes are watery. They were getting itchy, too. It felt like there was like shit flying in the air. Uh, You know what it's called? It ain't COVID. Omicron. No. That should um, make your eyes itch. Give me flow nays, give me some uh emergency and give me on this plane. Wait, what? Oh yeah. Hey, say where. <laughs> That's our show, guys. Make sure you share this episode with your parents, friends, enemies. Rate review us on Apple Podcasts. Give us that Spotify rate. Dude. Watch us on YouTube.com slash Gun and Drew. Subscribe to our Patreon, patreon.com slash Gun and Drew. Have a safe and happy new year. Don't let this Omicron get in your system because that's a surge is happening. But until next time, this nasal drips all over the mic. This has been Gun and Drew, baby. See you in 2022. Peace.